Bumble Girl again? <laughs> oh, sorry. It's great back. It's always going to She's got a big catalog. Bumble I like that voice. Though. It wasn't like the uh, auto-tune thing. Well, this is 500 views, so it's one of her more popular. <laughs> <laughs> it's like 495 from our, from our listeners. Yeah, it hit harder. I'm going to get 2,000 on my cooking show. <laughs> And yes, oh, that's views, not how many people watch me live. Michael broke that down. Oh. Check. <laughs> God Did it. Almighty. Biggie's Restaurant and Bar has been a staple of the community for over 30 years and is serving your favorites like a steak sandwich, waffle fries, and so much more. It's not just the food that's rocking. With a full bar and patio, Biggie's is the perfect spot for lunch, dinner, and a little laughter. Biggie's Original Hours are back. Open 11 a.m. till midnight, Wednesday, Thursday, and Sunday. And 11 a.m. till 1 a.m. on Friday and Saturday. Check out the full menu at Biggie'sRestaurant.com and stop in today. Hey, this is Tim McKernan, and I am here with Seth Goldcamp of Design Air Heating and Cooling, and I have been a longtime Design Air client. What separates you guys from everybody else? It's becoming more common for companies to just get their foot in the door. They try to come up with different ways to upsell. They try to see how much they can make off of a customer as opposed to, hey, we're in there to do a service. We're going to do it well. We're going to do it for a fair price. I don't know how many emails I have received from our listeners who experience the incredible customer service Design Air Heating and Cooling provides. It's Design Air Heating and Cooling. Online at designairservice.com. When we think of a real estate agent, we think of somebody simply selling our home or finding us a new one. I mean, they're all the same, right? Okay, here's the comps. We'll take some pics, we'll post them, and uh, hey, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll get back to you, okay? A home is life-changing, and your real estate agent should reflect that. Honesty, integrity, and someone who will go above and beyond to make your dreams come true. The Jeff Lottman Group with Compass Realty. We're different because you're different. We want what you want. Experience the difference today at JeffLottman.com. Bringing people and properties together. Temperatures are finally warming up here in St. Louis. And while that means more fun in the sun, it could also spell disaster for your lawn. Rain equals spring weeds, and now is the best time to get ahead of it. Green Envy has been here in St. Louis for more than a decade, servicing and treating lawns just like they would their very own. Crabgrass can lay dormant for years until the conditions are right, and the massive amounts of moisture we've had is sure to wake up even the oldest crabgrass seeds. Green Envy only uses products that have been formulated from Missouri soil, weather conditions, and turf types, not national generic products that are insufficient and ineffective. Let the experts at Green Envy help you choose the best treatment program for your lawn this season. Phone lines are open 12 hours a day, Monday through Friday and Saturday 9 to 1 to take your calls and answer questions. Call Green Envy today at 636-757-1600 or visit GreenEnvyLawns.com and make your lawn the envy of the neighborhood. I get asked all the time by people, if I'm in an accident, what should I do? And while yes, you should call the police, exchange insurance information, and take pictures of the scene, all those things are important. But the most important thing you need to do is hire a personal injury lawyer. This is Doug Biggs from Longo Biggs Injury Law. And if you've been hurt by someone else's negligence, don't take on the insurance company yourself. Insurance companies have teams of people and a playbook designed to keep you running in circles so they can pay you as little money as possible for your accident claim. If you don't have a lawyer, they know you can't bring your claim to court and they will never give you full value. We recently took an offer from an insurance company without a lawyer on the case from $12,000 to $200,000. You can't get that kind of result without an attorney on your case. Even if you don't hire us, you need to hire a personal injury attorney. Check us out online at longobigs.com. Live from the Michelob Ultra Studios, KPN-TFM HD2, Collinsville, St. Louis. This is TMA All Day. Rise and shine, St. Louis. It's the Brown and Crouppen Morning After on KPN-TFM HD2, Collinsville, St. Louis. At the Morning After STL on YouTube and on TMASTL.com. With Tim McKernan, Doug Vaughn, Iggy Strode, The Plowboy, and Action Jackson. 707 in St. Louis, you are listening to TMA, presented to you by Brown and Crouppen. Welcome, friends, to the Munganass St. Louis Acura Munganass Burkhardt Alton Toyota 7 o'clock hour. Timothy Michael McKernan, Jackson Burkett is sitting in for the vacationing Douglas Elvin Vaughn, Kenneth Iggy Strode, the Plowhawk, and KG in O-Town with you on the program. And we welcome you to get involved in the uh, text inbox, which is presented to you by Jeff Lottman.
of Compass Realty, J E F F L O T T M A N N dot com. And uh, our phone lines, now sponsored by Collier and Thompson. My entire kitchen, I believe, is from Collier and Thompson. So we have been doing business with Collier and Thompson, and we welcome you to do business with a new sponsor here on TMA. The phone line sponsor, Collier and Thompson. And, of course, email in for our design, air, heating, and cooling email the day, the morning after, at InsideSTL.com. Current standings one day into the month of March. Blueberry Pop Pop with the win on Friday gives him an early lead. Get involved on the program. They were waiting for us in the YouTube chat. Carl Pelker, Jack Hoare. Jack Hoare? Jack Hoare? Jack Hoare. I don't mind that. I don't know. Welcome to the show, Jack Whore. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's an interesting How about spelling. them dogs? Woof, woof. The atmosphere at those games looks awesome. Can't wait to go. That's from Jack Whore. <laughs> How's he spelling that? Uh, it's Jack. Oh, I apologize. Yeah, Jack. Jack, Jack Whore. Oh. And then it's like horror movie. Not like... Oh, okay. <laughs> not like... Not like a... Uh, uh, Jake Reynolds... Uh, omnipresent, Nine Mile is a great place to mingle with like-minded folks for doggies games as well. What's that mean? Like-minded. Like -minded. I like that. I don't know what it means, but what does it mean? Nine Mile Gardens, a nice little beer garden in the Afton area. I got to agree with Jake there. What's, uh, what's like-minded mean? That's what I'm asking. I'm not looking for a live read. Oh, my apologies. Uh, I don't know what the like-minded part is. I like it. Like soccer fans? I think that I'm gonna, that's what I'm going to go with. Pitch heads. Pitch heads. Is that what they're called? Oh, I hope not. Don't, please. They're not called pitch heads, are they? Let's uh, get it going. Did he say before the game? Um, Probably just... Four that. doggy games. Uh, just to watch the game. Oh, to yeah. watch the game. Yeah. not really a stop on your way to the... No. Soccer stadium in Afton. No. No. It's a good place to watch. We have some calls from the uh, game. Iggy, did you get a chance to listen? Uh, no, I missed it. All right. I didn't even know they played. one oh one first. Uh, <laughs> yeah, let's, uh, let's go to it. City still pursues it. Pompeu comes up with the takeaway. Closing it on the 18th. Celio guarding through. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess he's scored. Celio Pompeu! City leads! I gotta say, like the city leads thing. I hope he ends That's in his there. thing. Is that a thing now? Yeah, okay. he's been. Since, I since knew he he's, did. Since he's been starting, he's been doing the city leads thing when they take a, a 1 0 lead. I'm a fan of that. Yeah, that's a good call. But they weren't done, Iggy. No, they scored more than one. They did. Take a listen. <laughs> the steal on the go, but he pushes it into the box. Yeah! Oh, baby! Big Sam! 2-0 City! She's too close. <laughs> Jackson's, I think, really laughing. I like that. That's a good one. Thank you. How about that? Uh, that one uh, makes sense. Like that. There's no way. Like that one makes sense. You're gonna let somebody from Craigslist into your house to try on a bathroom? <laughs> Klaus down the right side of the box. Cuts it back toward the middle. Oh! Oh! City leads! <laughs> I love the yeah. I got three last night. Two. No, that was just uh, one of his one of his greats from last season. Oh, well, you could tell there was a pause trying to find the right cue card for them. <laughs> he let it breathe a little bit. That's a good win. Let me tell you something. Who'd they play? Uh, New York City FC. Big market. The Celio Pompeo, a player. I don't mean to get two dogs in, uh, intensive. Hey, you don't have to apologize. Oh, God, no. He is unbelievable. That first goal he scored, he went right around. He had another shot, missed off the near post. That was nasty. That pass to Adeneron was a great pass that led to that second goal. He was all over. Can I ask? He's a player. Being stupid. Is this a new player? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Brazilian guy. He's Sorry. outstanding. Is this count the standings or is part of the conclave? Uh, they are out of the CONCACAF Champions Cup. This was a this was a standard MLS game. If it's played on a Saturday night, it's an MLS game. Almost always. There's a few exceptions, I guess. But if it's a Saturday at 7.30, best bet, it's an MLS game. I do like those white kits they came out with, though. The Confluence kits? 
Uh, you know, what I don't like the name, but well, they weren't wearing those on Saturday. No, they were not. No, they I know. I'm just saying, like, what they did with those. It was just a, a non sequitur fashion observation. Yeah, yeah. that's uh, all I know about the soccer game. <laughs> uh, the uh, there's a, there's a there's a number of doggy stories here. Um, is anybody on the dais? I just need to know in advance before I put it out there, and then no. I'm met with silence. <laughs> all right, he's already withdrawn. He already I watched. Said, he already said no. <laughs> that's not the question. Oh. Uh, when I say Lamar Hunt U.S. Open Cup, does it mean anything to anybody? Yeah, it's like the world's oldest like sport. Do you know the news the... regarding the Lamar? Uh-uh. Okay, Plowhawk. I wish I would, <laughs> but I don't. KG <laughs> no town. I'm aware of it, but I'm not fluent really? in it. I, I saw the story last week. What yeah. do you know about the story? No, this isn't he's cheap. No, not what? that one. It, it didn't... No, not that. No, that's, that's his son, the owner of the Kansas City slash St. Louis Chiefs. This is this is Lamar Hunt U.S. Open Cup. Nope. Now, I know you, you you made it clear at the outset of the conversation you were out. KG No Town. No, I'm just going to see myself out. Is well. <laughs> <laughs> this the one where St. Louis decided not to participate? <laughs> And that, well, that's that, that's that's. I saw that on Twitter. That is that's how it's being represented, and uh, there are some people who are very unhappy about it locally, and I think beyond. Um, and I have, because of that, I have been conversing with uh, some people actually this morning on this topic. So the story was in the St. Louis Business Journal. I don't know if it made it. Its way. I'm not saying that it didn't make its way to the Post Dispatch. I just didn't see it in the Post Dispatch. I read it in the St. Louis Business Journal. Uh, Major League Soccer franchise St. Louis City SC will not participate in the 2024 Lamar Hunt U.S. Open Cup, a development that comes as MLS's leadership has denounced the current state of the National Soccer Tournament. The U.S. Open Cup features professional and amateur teams affiliated with U.S. soccer, which means clubs from the top-level MLS could end up facing an amateur side or one from a lower-tier minor league. MLS in December initially said it would not uh, let its top-level franchises participate in the 2024 U.S. Open Cup, with Commissioner Don Garber expressing displeasure with the tournament's quality and stature. Uh, but the league changed course on Friday, saying it would allow eight of its top-flight teams along with 11 from MLS Next Pro to compete in the tournament as part of an agreement with U.S. Soccer, which stages the U.S. Open Cup. City SC and MLS Next Pro Club St. Louis City 2 are not among the participants. So that has some uh, people unhappy locally. Uh, City SC president uh, Diego Gigliani said, uh, Friday in a provided statement that the club's exclusion from the U.S. Open Cup was not by choice. Mm -hmm. And uh, he said, we value the U.S. Open Cup's significant contribution to St. Louis's rich soccer legacy. We understand the decision made by MLS and U.S. Soccer for 2024, but would have preferred to be able to play in both the U.S. Open Cup and CONCACAF Champions Cup this year. Looking forward, City SC would like to be part of the conversations regarding MLS participation in future years, advocating for our city's deep connection with the tournament. Now, the St. Luligans and Plowhawk, are you a member of... <laughs> no, no, but I do follow them okay. closely. <laughs> uh, supporters group of St. Louis City SC in a statement posted to social media blamed MLS's concerns about schedule congestion to MLS's creation of the League's Cup competition launched last year that pits MLS teams against those from Mexican League uh, League MX. The St. Louisans, along with several other City SC supporters groups on Friday, called for their members to boycott League's Cup games until all MLS teams again compete in the U.S. Open Cup. Quote, this is not a lack of support for our players and staff. It's a referendum on the atrocious decisions of MLS to ignore the history of soccer that St. Louis has played a vital role in. So they are going to uh, protest by either not opting in with their ticket packages or just by passing on going to the League's Cups game. So uh, I was texting with producer Joe this morning. Uh, along with uh, others to get uh, perspective on this. And, uh, and he said that he is uh, irritated as well. And um, said MLS is greedy AF and created a League's Cup because they would, quote, own it, and it makes Apple happy. So get effed, Open Cup. I will not be opting in for League's Cup tickets this year. Did last year, and I opted in for the CONCACAF Cup 
as well. Well, that'll get him. <laughs> well, it's not just Joe. Joe didn't issue a statement. This was a text. He should issue a statement. <laughs> I wouldn't mind it if so he did. So Joe's goes pissed? A lot of St. Louis fans are. Yeah. It, it, it's so strange to me. If you're picking eight top flight teams, you don't pick City SC after... Well, it's because City SC was in the CONCACAF Cup. Ah, okay. So the next eight are okay. the ones that are in. So okay. the top four. That's why... In advance of the conversation, I wanted to see who was aware of it because I didn't want to put anybody in a weird spot. No, you know I get I mean? that for sure. I just uh, it seems like why would you not want the mo like your team top teams playing the most possible games? Regardless? Well, what you could have done is number one, not issued a statement, which just draws attention to it. Number two, play the games, um, all MLS teams, and then just play your reserves, and right. then you don't have this situation. But this is. Uh, an MLS-owned venture with the League's Cup, right. and so that is different, and that is why they are also saying the schedule got too congested. So you have a set of circumstances where uh, some of the most p uh, passionate supporters of City are furious and going to boycott, and so I said, do you think that we will see uh, some empty seats? And uh, I don't know if you'll ever see empty seats there, but... Uh, he said, locally, I think it'll be a lot of season ticket holders, yes, and primarily the supporters section, will, which will be most noticeable. Conversely, maybe it provides an opportunity for folks that have wanted to go to games to get tickets quite inexpensively. But we should be hosting two League's Cup games this year, so if there's a lot of opt-outs, it could be really noticeable. Mm, yeah. So That's for the first time, you might see the lack of demand. I doubt it. I mean, half those people in there don't even know what a Leeds Cup, a Conclave Cup, a U.S. Open Soccer Cup. I don't, they don't even know what it is. They just go to games. I'd say in general admission maybe, but supporter section, I think they're pretty pretty in the know. And what kind of a league has three tournaments within within a, your own... I mean, you're playing the MLS. Well, the MLS only has one tournament. There's two other yeah, federations. This goes, in, this goes on overseas. Big time. So in the middle of the season, you just leave to go play in another tournament? Yes. Yeah. It does happen. Makes no sense to me. Uh, me too, Iggy. I get that. It was like in the middle of a baseball season. You got, let's do the World Baseball Classic, and let's have another tournament. Let's have another tournament. You just stop playing baseball to play in three tournaments during the NBA the did it this season with an in-season tournament. It's just they're the same games. It's once, but it's still, the game still counted. Yeah. Yes. Yes. That was a little different. But this is not, and this is not done by the MLS. The League's Cup is put on by the MLS, but the U.S. Open Cup and then the CONCACAF Cup are different. Different federations entirely. Yeah, I know, but why why have it in the middle of a season and use this use these teams that are playing in a league to go play in these tournaments? It's more soccer, more eyes on the game. Yeah, I mean this, you know, MLS isn't long enough. Will they stop in March and start in April. And are there guys who kick with both legs? <laughs> and they play like ten months of the year. They do. It's a long season. Soccer's it's a really a long, long season. I yeah. was blown away by how long. Soccer's a very long season. Now, uh, Joshy Tuna says, I believe Houston is in the U.S. Open, and they're also in the CONCACAF. That is correct, Joshy Tuna. However, they are the defending champions, so that is the reason. Ah, uh, I believe St. Louis uh, has competed in 22 U.S. Cup finals and won 12 times. That is from the 314. Uh, most things don't make sense to dumbs. That's from a bankruptcy attorney? He's new? <laughs> I mean, we just have a bankruptcy attorney? I need one of those. So. Well, it's just an observation. Look, I'm, I'm not a soccer head. But pitch I, pitch I, head. I, I, just don't, pitch I just never heard of a, a league having three terms within their own league during the season. It's just... Uh, Jackson's favorite texture is Eric in the Central West it is. End. It is. And he says, soccer is so stupid. The NBA in-season tournament's stupid. That's from huh? Eric in the Central West End. People don't like change. Uh, <laughs> I also, I have to amend something. Pompeo's not new, and I apologize for saying if he was. We got like a thousand texts saying he's not new. I just, I don't remember much of him. Before. I'm not new on like this team. No, he's not. That's my apologies. He's I not. never, yeah, I did, I'd never heard. My apologies. Um... Yeah, Jackson, you're good, dude. You know about 95% more than mm. any one of us. On no, this. I wouldn't say that. Yeah, city in Italy, Pompeo. That's what I thought he Pompeii. said, but yeah. Yeah. Believe it, guy. That. There's a Pompey, Pompey Magnus, who was a great general in Rome. Bundesliga? Second Bundesliga? <laughs> a lot of Pompeys. Soccer guy getting upset about not being invited to Whittle Soccer Prom is Baby Girl. That's from Stephen Time. Is baby girl. Okay, that's if a really I get good tickets text. to this League's Cup, is that like crossing a picket line? Like, is that going to be a problem? I, I'm, that's, that's why I wanted to text with people before the show today 
because this is this is this is a thing. Yeah, right. Now, here's the thing about said thing. I want to make sure I reemphasize that. Here's the thing about said thing. For a portion of St. Louis, this is a huge deal. And then there is another portion of St. Louis, and I don't know my percentages just yet, that don't even know what's going on. On this particular program, 80% of the members of the program didn't know what was going on. But for whatever percentage of St. Louis sports fans, I suppose, uh, that are city fans, and sometimes you don't necessarily have as much overlap there as you would with, say, the Cardinals and the Blues, it is a huge, huge deal. And yes, it's a nice little analogy you made that if you go to a League's Cup game... Are you crossing the picket line? You're a soccer scab. Like, are people going to start, like, throwing things at me? if I? Because that does, well, right when I heard that and I heard the people might boycott, I was like, ooh, there might be cheap tickets. And I really want to go see a game. I've yet to go to City Park and see a game. And I'd really like to. I'll go with you. I'll there be a you scab. Go. You'll be a scab as you well. You got a kid. You'll look like more of a fan than me. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sure Genie over here will make you bum one in. Yeah, I can, I can bum the, the Genie. genie. <laughs> I, is that like Stolen Valor? <laughs> I guess I was on the podcast a couple times. And honored every time. <laughs> It'll still sell out. I would think. I, oh, think. I mean, with only Stephen Wildwood though. says uh, CONCACAF didn't sell out. He says they did not sell out the CONCACAF. Also, I'll tell you what. The talent in my section is very un-St. Louis. I'm excited for warmer weather so they can slut it up. That's from Chairman Steve in Wildwood. So you might, you might just accurate? have a section of just, what, hot 25-year-old lesbians? Tough to have better, better weather than Saturday night. It was perfect. Golly, man. Yeah. It was outstanding. We went to the uh, Blues game, uh, my wife and my sons and I, and uh, we were heading out, and the rush of people coming in for the city game was uh, quite pronounced. I bet people were doing a little twin bill. I'm sure, right some, I'm sure there were some twin bills. Couldn't be more convenient, and with that weather, optimal. Yeah, that'd be a great way to yeah, spend the Saturday. Wonderful Saturday. Saturday. The yeah. Blues get a 3-1 win. City gets their win. 2-0 to you, Jackson. Bingo. Uh, but yet some are very unhappy about uh, the U.S. Open, uh, the Lamar hunt, not the Clark. And uh, and then also another thing that didn't uh, that had some unhappy. Uh, Plowhawk, do you have this audio? <laughs> Big ear you were, this chant that didn't take on on <laughs> I don't r- I, I'm not aware of that I like being surprised so I don't listen to anything No, you say champ didn't take Chant Cameron Champ Cameron is champ. having trouble but this is a chanta yeah. chanta during the soccer game Yes Cam Champ nice. sang the national anthem It'd be sick I'm from the loop and I'm proud Write this. I'm from the loop and I'm proud. So, whew. You know what just happened? Ready to run through a wall. <laughs> <laughs> Me too, to end it. <laughs> <laughs> One side of the building was supposed to say, I'm from the, kind of like M-I-Z, Jensen. Mm-hmm. I'm from the loo, and then the other one was going to say, and I'm proud, but unfortunately it didn't, it didn't catch. And so there were some people who were expressing... Frustration. Well, how can you say one side do this? He said it right. I'm from the Lou and I'm proud. There's no break in there for one side to say something. The, the call other and side response. To say something. Oh. Call and response. Yeah. Yeah, that's, you know, just like M I Z Z O U. That's why I want to wait a couple of years until they really hone in on those chants. I still feel like they're kind of in that preliminary stage of picking and choosing and trying chants out. When I go to a game, I want to make sure they got it buttoned up. So we don't have any issues. It just doesn't necessarily strike fear into the heart. Like, I understand the reference, obviously, to, to country grammar, and I love that that tune, but I don't know if that's, like, a real battle cry, necessarily. That's, oh, could you imagine the players on the field having to cringe through that one? That's awful. <laughs> God. So you're not on board again? No. <laughs> one of the worst chances I've ever and I'm proud. Boom, boom. I think so they, anybody bring those kazoos in? 
The Vuvuzelas. Oh, I missed no. those. Let those things in. Remember when that was those a fan for so long? Those are definitely banned. Pretty sure those are banned. Went to my second city game Saturday first in about a year, and I can't get over how good the experience uh, is. You are on top of the field no matter where you sit, and I think that's from our 2023 Jay Randolph Jr. Fan Page Club champion, Dogtown Tie. Mm -hmm. I've heard nothing but great things of people who have gone there. It's a perfect size stadium. In terms of the food, the, yeah. Yeah, the easy in, easy out. Yeah, a lot of local restaurants, all local restaurants, pretty much. I'm What's all for the stadium. What's the parking sitch down there? I don't know about the stadium, Doug. but I know we parked there and go to Maggie O's, and it was fine. Like, I, I, I've had an issue. The lot we parked in for the Blues game had plenty of people um, going to the city game from there, and that's mm. on the south side of the uh, Enterprise Center. So, other side from Clark, or? South, yeah, south side of, uh, yeah, other side of Clark. Yeah, there used to be a... I don't know what's there now. There used to be a parking lot right on Clark, which is kind of between Enterprise and the stadium. Betwixt. Yeah, you park Thank there, you. you're like five minutes to walk, and there's always spots in there. It's gone now. Hey, dumbs, be more curious, not judgmental. That's from the 314. Jackson, isn't that a shirt you wear? It's my, I want that on my tombstone. How about that? But also, like... Curious about what we're to specifically talk about the chant. Like, is this about the chant? Because why would I be curious about that? It's awful. Yeah, I'm <laughs> curious. Get another chant. Like, that, that's it. it, it the I'm topic's curious. over Tell with me that. More. Yeah, like, I'm I, curious. Tell me more about we're from the Lou, we're proud. I want to be on the proud side. Yes, of the I'm with you on that. Way. But maybe about, like, the, the tournaments. It seems like. And I don't mean to oh, pass aspersions here be. on my friends from Pepper and Genie, but it seems like <laughs> judgment was quickly passed before curiosity was peaked. Wow. Hold on a second. I want to type that in. <laughs> well, could you repeat that? It seems like judgment was, was quickly passed before curiosity was well, peaked. Well, I'm not curious at all about the thing. <laughs> <laughs> Jackson, your response, that's considering... That's, that's, that's a, yeah. it's like your tombstone. No curiosity. Old, Holyfield versus no curiosity Tyson. Got my ear my part. I can care less. This new segment where we let the two eternal haters, I like that, the eternal haters. <laughs> yeah, perma hater. That live on food stamps, critique the coolest thing St. Louis has had since the Riverfront McDonald's is quality <laughs> content. That's from Little Tommy Tribbins, and he won Texture of the Year in 2022. There's a lot of things I like about City. The stadium, the jerseys, I think local vendors at stadiums was awesome. I think, you know, at, uh, Enterprise Center started to do that. Um, yeah. And so I, I like that they followed suit in that. I, I just don't understand the game. That that's just that's not being an, an internal hater. I don't understand the game. It's hard to even follow the game, let alone the outside tournaments that are involved that Jackson was alluding to. It's it's uh, being a dum dum and was like, <laughs> like I'm, I, I didn't grow up around soccer. We didn't have soccer in my high school, dude. We ended really? at, we ended at eight years Is that old. Right? Yeah, wow. the last time somebody in Canton played soccer up until a few years ago was eight years old. So it's uh, it, we didn't have it on TV, so you know it's hard for me to grasp the concept of soccer. I barely understood hockey, and I fell in love with it. Well, we're not we're not trashing the St. Louis City team. I think me and Plowsy have all have said it looks like a great atmosphere. Um, people show up every game. The only thing I trash is having three tournaments inside of a season. We're from the Lou, and we're proud. Sucked. <laughs> and I don't care for the goal calls. Other than that, I'm all for it. Yeah, and I'm with you on most of that. I just think with the with the tournaments, the, because it's so popular globally with soccer doing tournaments in the season, I think that there is some reasoning and some merit behind doing it in America. There is, but if you're a novice like me, mm -hmm. and like probably 30% of those people in the stadium are going for the atmosphere, if not more, you see in the paper, St. Louis City wins 2-1. Oh, great, another win. Do we move up in the standings? No, it didn't count. It's a tournament. What? You, you, you get confused. Yeah. With soccer, the trophies are really important. And if the more trophies you can win, the better. And if you can win two of these tournaments and you maybe don't win the league, you still end the season with two trophies. That's pretty nice. I guess. Uh, Mayor Frank Rizzo asks via email, Morning, boys. Do you think there's a correlation between the number of city fans with pronouns in their bios relative to other sports fans and this fan base's overall insufferable existence. That's from Mayor Frank Rizzo. Jackson, I feel like this would fall into the curious, judgmental thing. Man, that is deep. Yeah, it seemed like it started out with some curiosity and then ended with some harsh judgment. 
Uh, so was, there was curiosity. I mean, it was a question. Was it wasn't a statement. Yeah, no, there was there was curiosity involved, but it seemed like a f it was framed in a judgmental way. Uh, but I would say that City fans probably trend a touch younger. Therefore, younger people are more likely to have, like Mayor Frank Rizzo said, pronouns in their bio. Uh, and then if you want to then deem that insufferable, that's on you. But I would say your first question has some merit because they're... I would say they trend a little younger. Well, Jackson giving us his perspective. The listeners want to give theirs. And we have a new sponsor here on our phone lines. And it's Collier and Thompson. The number six three six nine zero zero four tma And that means Billy Haywood is the first to ever be on the Collier and Thompson TMA phone lines. Billy Haywood, welcome to the morning after presented to you by Brown and Crouppen. Hey, good morning, guys. How are you? What's the good word? Sounds great. Yeah, uh, I went to the game this past Saturday, the the soccer match, excuse me, um, this past Saturday, and I had a, had a fantastic time, um, but, but had a question um, for the dais. So we were in the uh, supporter section, me and, um, me and my good friend uh, from Tulsa went. Um, he came into town, big dogs fan. Um, we went to the game, supporter section, got there when the doors opened, um, one of the first handful of people in the stadium, you know, you do your little speed walk down to the supporter section and we get to the front row and we get down there and folks had already draped their scarves over multiple seats. And as you know, the sports section is GA. So but when, regardless of how early you get down there, you can't really sit like right behind the goal in the best spot. Um, and so, you know, we had asked like, oh, um, you know, are, are your like folks here, like maybe grabbing a bite to eat? And, and they were pretty honestly like, oh no, they'll, they'll get here about 15 minutes before game time. So just curious uh, what, what your guys' thoughts were on that. Um, and then uh, short aside about Scarf Guy after, after your thoughts. Well, so, so to be clear, people are using their scarves to mark their seats or are people doing it on their behalf? So they're doing it on the behalf of others who are not in the stadium. Like I get, like if you, like if me and my buddy went in there, we got our seats, and then it was like, okay, I'm going to leave and go get my food. And when I come back, you leave and go get your food. That way, nobody takes our seats. Like I, I thought that was like the general understanding. Got it. I'm with you. If you're not there, you can't save seats for a bunch. Oh of people. hell no! And I would have a huge. I hope my first game I run into a scarf saver. A scarf Ooh, saver. Nah. You're about to get lit up. A scarf saver. I like that. That's a new label for fans. <laughs> Look, he's a scarf saver. Yeah, I, I could not Yeah, and if you that. get there, fine. It's just, you know, one person goes and then, no, I'm saving seats for the other eight. They're not here yet. They're over there drinking. I'm just saving seats for them. No, no. if you're not there, you don't get to save a seat. All right. I'm glad we're on the same page. I, I, I felt kind of odd, like, getting into a confrontation with this oh, guy. Oh, did it lead to a confrontation? You, you didn't tell me about the confrontation. <laughs> Oh, oh no 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 no! I was it, I was just like whatever, man. And then we sat five seats over. It wasn't a huge deal. But later in the game, the guy was standing right next to me and was like total soccer hardo guy and was asking me like who on the other team was guarding. I mean, like number ten on our team. I've been I went to like three games last year. I'm not exactly. I I enjoy watching the dogs. I couldn't tell you who number ten is. But the guy was like asking me like who downfield is covering our players. Um, and then he asked me later in the game if a guy kicked the, if he kicked it with his left foot. And I looked at him and I go, so are there guys that kick with both feet? Nice. And he was so disappointed in me. Um, <laughs> that, like, I, and I was dead. Like, I mean, I'm not that guys who kick with both legs? gave him a dead serious delivery. Yeah. <laughs> so was he like so quizzing he was, you? Uh, was he like quizzing you? Or was yeah, he asking? Was weird. Was he generally asking, or was he like quizzing? Sounded like he was trying to feel out how much knowledge you had. He was trying yeah. to tell you that look, <clears throat> I'm a soccer guy and I know what's going on. I just want to try and impress you. So he was quizzing you. Yeah. So I, it was oh. very much like I'm going to suss out what your level of knowledge is. And oh, I, I hope that's guys brutal. Kind of I hope I said no further questions. Blah, blah, you're going to sit next. <laughs> I hope. I Can don't you know. take Plowhawk to the game with you, uh, Billy Hayward? <laughs> I would, I'd love to go with Billy Hayward. Yeah, sure. Hell yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I think uh, me, you, and uh, the delightful T.J. Weber should get together and go. Oh, are you kidding me? Uh, Weber, Absolutely, T.J. Weber, Weber, Weber Lemming. Yeah. I'm a scent for T.J. Yeah, I love that big, Opening drive. For, uh, Lemming. For a pitch, first baby. pitch. <laughs> that would just ruin the whole atmosphere. Yeah, we need to bring back me. first pitch, Tim. <laughs> okay. I mean, All right. Tommy well, uh, Matter. <laughs> appreciate your time this morning. All right. Thank you, Billy Haywood.
I like that call. First call on the new sponsorship line. Yeah, Collier and Thompson phone lines. Pollock and Billy Haywood. Good call. Wasn't mean. And didn't even get into an altercation. Just said, ah, we'll move someplace Told else. Told a little anecdote, Iggy. Yeah. I, I like how honest the opposite. I would have taken the scarf and thrown it. I don't know about throwing it, but like I would certainly say like in the future, you probably shouldn't be doing this. You're going to run into a lot of confrontation, sir, if you continue to do this. I'd try to probably go that route and then just skull off them the entire game if I'm five <laughs> rows away. Uh, Mayor Don says Billy Haywood should be the listener of the month, which, of course, is sponsored by Milagro Tequila. Early, one one yeah. phone call, and you can win it. We've hey, seen so it with Natty Nate. He nearly won the listener much. of the year. Early start for March. We got a papal conclave today uh, for February. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Conclave today. Here we go. Uh, so we'll find out who ships it for the month of February. Milagro Tequila, sponsor of our listener of the month here on TMA. Welcome to a brighter side of tequila with Milagro. Design Air is the sponsor of the email today, the morning after at InsideSTL.com. I mean, it is so wonderful that on March 4th, the sun is up and it is shining bright like a diamond. It's 61 degrees. Now, the hawk's going to be up. The hawk was up on Saturday. It was up yesterday, aggressively up yesterday. Ooh, big time. I am telling you. Uh, but still, I'm looking at these temperatures, and yeah, Saturday doesn't look good, Iggy. But uh, then we're right back into the 60s and 70s next week. So it is time to get the air conditioning checked up because the weather has warmed up much sooner than normal. Design Air is where you go. DesignAirService.com. I'm a client. Doug's a client. And Iggy is a client. Design Air Heating and Cooling. Seth Goldcamp. Fourth generation of Design Air Heating and Cooling. Go online at DesignAirService.com. Jackson, tell me where I can place a wager if I want to live bet the Cognizant Classic. Sure, Tim. You just make your way over to the great state of Illinois and you sign up with the Circa Sports app. The world's largest sports book in Las Vegas is now in Illinois. KG and O-Town and I were out there in August. It's an awesome, awesome place out there in Las Vegas, uh, Fremont Street, downtown Vegas. And they're taking all that great stuff they have with the Circa Sports book over here to Illinois so you can enjoy it as well because the Circus Sports app is sports betting the way it should be with big app bets, high betting limits, tight money line splits, and the best customer service around. We're just a few weeks away. The big dance is right around the corner. It's March, so it's officially making your free throws season. It's time now. There's going to be plenty of buzzer beaters, plenty of upsets coming in this year's tournament, and you can bet on all of it with the Circa Sports app, which is now available in Illinois. Visit CircusSports.com for more details and get ready to Start betting like a pro. If you or someone you know may have a problem with gambling, call 1-800-GAMBLER or text ILGAMB to 833-234. Mungan Ass is the sponsor of the 7 o'clock hour, stlouisaccurate.com and altontoyota.com. Go online and work with the best. The best is Jamie Burkhardt, Clayton Patterson, Peter Mungan Ass, and then in the service department, Ryan Seiberg. Even if you did not get your car from Mungan Ass, you can get your car serviced at Mungan Ass, St. Louis Accurate, Mungan Ass, Burkhardt, Alton Toyota. Online! stlouisaccurate.com and altontoyota.com, the official automotive provider of TMA and the Tim McKernan Show podcast, and the presenting sponsor of Balloon Party. We'll have Jeremy Rutherford with us today at 1045 on 101 ESPN. It's Mungan S. St. Louis Accurate, Mungan S. Burkhardt. Alton Toyota, 7 o'clock hour, sponsor and sponsor of the Daily Fantasy Sports Showdown, and that leads me to this question. We are still in the midst of the Cognizant Classic in the Palm Beaches. Uh, because of a rain delay yesterday. And so uh, the current leader, I can't imagine. Did anybody have Austin Eckroth by chance? No. Can't imagine. No, nope, no one did. Okay, he is uh, leading by a stroke, and he is making the turn to the gettable par 5 tenth, which was a par 4 last year, par 5 this year. Uh, so good chance for a birdie, maybe even an eagle, from the leader. And uh, the only other player who is out on the course who could catch him uh, is Iggy's uh, crush, Min Wu Lee. Did you have him on your team, Iggy? I do. And I also have Shane Lowry, who just made another bogey. Um, oh. I mean, he's, he's just, I guarantee he's fed up. Two of the last three years, the rain screwed him. He's probably throwing clubs and pissed off. But um, <clears throat> yeah, and uh, who else do I have? I have four guys in the top nine. Are you serious? Novak. Yeah, Novak's. I think a couple under for the day. Unfortunately, uh, the bastard and Brendan Todd are also on your roster. And they emceed. Yeah. Yeah, they uh, they decided that uh, with four holes to go, they were both inside the cut line with four holes to go, and. Uh, Brendan Todd shot three over for his last four, missed by a shot. Ah, the bear trap. And um, <clears throat> who's the other guy? 
uh, the bastard. Oh, Straka, yeah, he went he went five over his last four holes to miss ah, the cut. Ah, the bear so, trap. Yeah, they uh, no, they were on the they were they played the back nine first, so they screwed up on the front nine. I think seven, eight, and nine is the easiest stretch on that course. Yeah, it I don't is. even know how you can get it into is. that. There's not trouble on yeah. seven, eight, or nine. They both make I mean, double unless, bogeys on you're... six. For real? Yeah, yeah I don't know. Having played that thing a, a lot, the one place where you can kind of exhale is when you get off of the uh, off the fifth tee. Yeah, everybody or off, else off was the fifth green. Everybody else was birding those holes, playing them under par. My two guys played it in six over par. And that's for the record because uh, number six is a par five for the non PGA players, and it's gettable when it's a par five uh but yeah six seven eight nine i'm sorry to hear that iggy i don't know what the hell happened there i would if you been. do it on 15 16 17 i get it but uh that kept you from a million dollars probably you have a sick lineup outside of those well, two. close you know if i would have just played and i could have played both these guys if i would have played um billy horschel instead of um i could have got him in in place of todd about the same price and I could have played anybody other than Straka. He was like 9,700, I think. Uh, either way, I would have said I'm cashing in my big game. I doubt if I'm cashing in. Cashing as at, at the moment, but I don't know if that will hold with the two missed cuts. Well, I look who's behind me. I mean, I'm in my game, I'm cashing 10 bucks again. I was cashing 10 bucks before yesterday. After three holes, I wasn't cashing. And now I'm cashing 10 again, and the guy behind me has no holes left, and I got like 18 holes Jackie left. Jackie so. has no holes Paul Goldschmidt on the uh, on the broadcast on uh, Friday afternoon. It was fun to see. Head right from spring training game right over to PJ National. How about that, Iggy? He was on the broadcast? Mm hmm Yeah, he sat down with Smiley Kaufman. That's I wound up par threes. Yeah. And Mike. all the players came by, were giving Rory was giving them love. He was he was saying, you know, about the waste management. He's like, it's kinda nice to see because like so often I have drunk guys telling me I suck, and so it's kinda nice to see other athletes get that train. We usually guys. don't get it because he lives in Ocala, Florida, I believe. If he bought Louis Eustazen's house, you know, he bought Eustazen's house when it was in Palm Beach Gardens. Oh, I think and then Eustazen moved to. Well, he moved to Ocala, Ocala which is yeah. worse country. Uh, is uh, Doug uh, live or is Doug dead? Dead, 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 dead. dead. Or yes, Cage, you know, Tanner, are you oh, live yes. or are you dead? I'm also dead. Wow. Well, it looks like Iggy is going to win, and he will move above 500. In the Munganess Daily Fantasy Sports Showdown. Wow, wow, wow. Nice win, Iggy. Thank you. Give Jake Knapp credit. I mean, there's a guy that won last week. was oh, awful. We awful in the, <laughs> on the <laughs> team box. We do. He had two fairways in his final round last week. A great short game up and down. Uh, but, I mean, you can't drive the ball over on this course. And he must have figured it out. He's, I think he's in fourth place. Uh, he is currently T3. Yeah, your guy Novak could catch. He's uh, tied with Min Wu. Well, that's a shame about uh, Todd and Straka because you really would have had something going there, especially if Novak or Min Wu Lee could win the thing. Anyway, it's the Munganass Daily Fantasy Sports Showdown, uh, also sponsored by Munganass, sponsor of our 7 o'clock hour here on TMA. Uh, Stephen Wildwood is a Malagro Tequila listener of the year, and he says the following, I know nothing about the MLS until I bought season tickets. Your comments are always uninformed, and it's kind of annoying. I tend to not comment on things I don't know about, but I don't have a mic in front of me either. Maybe just do it less. It's just an idea. That's from Chairman Steve and Wildwood. That was not directed at anybody specifically, so it could be any of the I five. I felt like it was to me and Iggy. And, I, you know, I'll take Steve's advice. I love me some Steve. I, I try not to bash, like, the on-field play. I have no idea. But I, I do not like the chance, and I don't really understand the obsession with the fan trying to tell you when to cheer or how to cheer. Like, that's the part I don't like about the... Uh, yeah, what do you not like about being uninformed as far as what? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uninformed as far as what? The chant? I said I didn't like that. He said you're being critical of things you're uninformed about. Yeah. I heard the chant for the first time. I commented on it. It's awful. I need to get more information on... We're proud. We're from the Lou. I need more information on, on that. Yeah. Give me some more info on that. So I'm I can actually be more educated before I say I don't like it. I Steve, call in. Why did you write that chant? And why didn't it work this past Saturday? 636-9004, TMA. Uh, that is uh, the Collier and Thompson phone lines. Uh, also, another new sponsor on the program. Uh, and that is Schaefer Door, sponsor of our 9 o'clock hour. That's S. 
C H A E F E R Schaefer Door Company. I can tell you this, and I bet a lot of our listeners have experienced this. It is an unpleasant thing when that garage door spring blows out. Oh man! Oh, you know I what I'm talking about? I saw my, Alvin Mack my just used had to an do. issue the other day. Alvin Mack was on the TMA fan page, and we could barely lift it. I wish we had Schaefer back when I was living in Brentwood. I am telling when that thing cracks and drops. Yeah. Oh, you are doomed. So have, now you have a place to go. I have a scar on my door. shoulder because of that. You have a what? A scar on my shoulder from, from, our, the... from our garage door back in the day. I was pissed off. I wanted to go, uh, I don't know, I wanted to go play baseball or something. And my mom said, not until you lift up that door and take the trash out. And I couldn't lift it. And I got pissed off and I leaned on it and my shoulder went through a window. Oh, Bill. If Schaefer was there, I wouldn't have the scar. Well, uh, you can work with them. They uh, are uh, Schaefer. Do I want to make sure I emphasize this? Because Schaefer, you think Schaefer could be spelling it so many different ways. No, yeah. no, 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 no. S C. H A E F E R. It's Schaefer Door Company. And this is a nice move. I don't know who started this trend with our sponsors, but whoever did it, they deserve a lot of credit. Uh, they have given a number specific for our audience 636 782 3608. And you can call or text that number because uh, obviously a lot of it is going to be emergency. I mean, if that happens on a Saturday at like 7 p.m., you got a situation on your hands. So once again, the number is 636-782-3608, SchaeferDoor.com, S-C-H-A-E-F-E-R-D-O-O-R.com, SchaeferDoor.com. Com. They service all kinds of garage doors for service and new installs. And they have Monday morning standby service for those doors that break over the weekend. So that way they always have spots blocked out to make sure they can get over on a Monday morning for you. They service commercial doors as well. If you're in a business or warehouse with big, tall doors, Schaefer is experienced in these types of jobs as well the business has multi multiple multi-family members living there uh, working there excuse me and big enough to get any job done but small enough to talk with a person uh, who can have a situation going on and an important question uh, service techs are not commission based once again go to schaeferdoor.com s c h a e f e r d o o r dot com or call or text 636-782-3608. Schaefer Door is a Clope Master Authorized Dealer. Welcome aboard Welcome to aboard. Door. Maybe yeah. they can come in and put a window in our door so we can actually see on Put a window in our door. Maybe they, they would do that. we got a little hanger device on there right now. I see that's it. Do yeah, you like to use that? Do you I use like that? You got your, yeah, I don't do it. I use my chair. I use my chair as well. Uh, welcome aboard Schaefer Door, and also Collier and Thompson, sponsor of our uh, new phone lines. Uh, let's see. Uh, Papa Aldente says, I feel like the fan base is a tad bit yuppie, so I'm not that interested in going to a dog's game. Is that curious or judgmental? Uh, judgmental, but I like the name Papa Aldente. That's really <laughs> funny. Like a perfectly cooked noodle. <laughs> is, is that a yuppie? Do, do we have a yuppie thing? It's going to be tough to have St. Louis yuppies, to right. be honest with you. Yeah. Yeah, now, you and I have been labeled yuppie in the douchebag by 101 ESPN listeners. Right. Not sure which one's which. I could be either. Yeah, so the term same. yuppie is out. Yeah, it seems very it's 80s, been out. right? It's been 80s, out for 90s. a few decades. <laughs> I mean, yuppie was when you popped the collar and, you know, wore a polo, popped the collar, or had on like a a belt that had the uh, thing hanging down a little bit. Wall or, chain? No. Uh, yuppie's out. Yuppie to me. I, I, I can look yuppie sometimes, but yuppie's out. I asked KG the other day about uh, like mid 2000s styles, about popping the collar on the polo shirt, and KG said he used to wear two of them. Oh, well, you two double collared? Collar. Yeah, double polo, popped collar, <laughs> visor, frosted tips. Nice. <laughs> Not proud. Puka shells. Puka shells oh, for yeah, sure. Oh, God, I love yeah. that look. Is that yuppie? I don't know if you can be yuppie and Jeff go either. <laughs> it's also yes, your 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 area code and that zip code are definitely. Key. But like Christmas vacation, like Julia Lee Dreyfus and her husband are like the yuppies, right? That and would be accurate, Jackson. Yeah. That's a nice that's a nice uh, callback because a lot of people are still watching that movie. That would be yuppies. Okay. Here's, <clears throat> here's an old picture. That's kind of a yuppie look. Kind of the, the, the pink polo. Here? We call that preppy, actually. Oh, it's a pink striped polo. 
I mean, Yuppie was about hair like blondish. A, a goal of like a. I really felt like usually it was a couple too, but maybe not. It stands for young, upwardly mobile professional, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. I mean, like I said, minus being called it on 101 ESPN, <laughs> which was really alarming just in the sense that I didn't know people still used the word. <laughs> I hadn't thought about it since uh, Timothy Busfield's 30 something. But with this, uh, somebody, Pop Aldente, is that who it was? Pop was Aldente. saying that the city crowd is yuppie. It, se it seems like the yuppie would be the enemy of the heartland. <laughs> Maybe I'm off. Is a yuppie like a know-it-all? No, it's somebody no. who is yearning for uh, money and perhaps status. Okay. Oh, I don't know about Essentially that. Essentially, so, Instagram's business model. Right, so I think it's, it's now like evolved into, you know multi-level market. I didn't take it that literally. I always thought it was just the way you dressed. Yeah. I think that's more preppy. Yeah. yeah. Oh, preppy is different than yuppie. Yeah, okay. preppy yes. is the, I'm thinking uh, preppy. Okay. Any fan base that chants about deep-fried pasta filled with ground beef like a point of pride should not be yuppie under any circumstance. That's from Carlos Spicy Wiener. Yeah, yeah the, that's uh, true. The marketing strategy of calling it toasted and not fried is a real... I feel like that's a real strategy. Guys, St. Louis is the poster child for little man syndrome. That's from the Hunchback of Vaughn Castle. Well, maybe that's why I've been on air for 25 years. <laughs> um, Hunchback of Vaughn Castle, that uh, brings me to this email that was sent to me this morning. I don't know Yo. if this was QFTA. Uh, Jackson, I don't think we were tagged in it. Okay. But it was sent to me by somebody who sends in emails for uh, both TMA and QFTA. And it's a thread... But it's just one person. Oh, it's I not, saw this. Oh, you, so were we tagged the, in it? Uh, no, I just saw Is this about the lack of coverage? On 101 ESPN? Yes, I saw this. Okay. Then I shall read it. How did you see it? I was scrolling Twitter this morning, and I somehow scrolled upon it. Maybe it's because Plowhawk was eventually tagged in it. Like, <laughs> How deep, were you tagged in it? Deep in, in the replies, someone was like, Plowhawk, look at this. Oh, I see. And I saw one like, and I just had to assume it was the Plowhawk. <laughs> So maybe that's how I saw I it. I think I did like it, yeah. Uh, it's still shocking to me how little coverage, uh, this is from tattooed underscore llama underscore. It's still shocking to me how little coverage 101 ESPN gives to City. Hours devoted to out-of-market teams and sports that aren't in season. Is that right? Certainly I mean, I, can't, I, can, I can only speak for, you know, the Huntley of the real estate, which, of course, is a one-hour midday program. That's right. But uh, I don't believe we spend a lot of time on... Out of market or out of season sports. No, and I think you have to. But I can't speak for the other programs. Yeah, I mean, I can't, can't hear Randy character right now. I'm doing this program. Yeah, uh, it depends what you mean by lack of coverage. I mean, every show is supposed to be spending 30 minutes a day on it. Because I know Randy and those guys had uh, Matt C back in last week with the new kits, and they were promoting <laughs> so this goes it. Goes back to your unhappiness that you don't have. A yeah, kid. so they promote them whenever they can. I don't know if, if every show you expect to talk 30 minutes every day about it. They had the sideline reporter on Friday. Uh, who does all the city games? Well, either way, I don't. I, 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 I can only read the tweet here. Hours devoted out of market teams and sports that aren't in season. I don't know what that would be, but I don't know. Maybe it's in reference to your update on the uh, Cavs beating the Mavs last week. But that's in season. I guess it's out of. And that's also well, thirty of seconds yeah. of coverage. And the term market is so you know tangible. Like it's so it moves around. You know. But the massive St. Louis soccer community is supposed to be happy with the scrap coverage of City and MLS. Jackson, you always like when somebody says a thread? Oh, yeah. And also, massive, do you have any hard data? Like, no. Uh, thread of misses. Ref lockout. I can't imagine what they would be doing if this were happening in the NFL, MLB, or NBA. <laughs> Yet no analysis or discussion of this important storyline. Plowk, did you know that the referees were locked out? Of uh, the MLS? Yes. No. Um, what do they do? <laughs> what I, do you mean? Hold I up got the yellow the, card. Yeah. I got, okay, never mind. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know what you meant. What do they do? <laughs> no, I'm thinking like, what, what they do. What the wanna, officials do? Yeah. But I guess they run so, around and... So the regular officials have been locked out. It's part of a pay dispute, and M MLS is uh, using scabs. Uh, I got this email saying MLS told announcers not to belabor it. Yeah, I saw that. Uh, their memo to honor talent was leaked. Quote, fans tune in to watch and listen to the game, the memo said. They aren't focused on the officials. Therefore, we don't believe it's necessary to belabor the point during the match. It's best to mention the situation in the pregame and move on. So that got out uh, as uh, fans are uh, wondering what's going on with that situation. So there's... 
that deal. Um, U.S. Open Cup, the oldest soccer tournament in the country, being dismantled as a money grab, but no conversation. But didn't that happen on Friday? Yeah, Certainly. but they were supposed to break into programming over the weekend. We actually should have came out hey, Jay Delson, get the hell out of here. We got to hey, talk soccer. Randy Character here. Sorry, Jay, <laughs> but we got some breaking news. Imagine if... Episode, guys, we got TMA in here. I know in season tournaments are hard for new to soccer people, but come on, this is a but come on, <laughs> Just come on, give me that. This is important to St. Louis and to the future of soccer in the United States. Uh, and then there's a, f a few more things that that uh, go on. But he, I guess, took a screenshot of yeah all the tweets, all that... the tweets from 101 ESPN. Yeah, that about be the future of soccer when the cup's been around forever. Is 1914. Yeah, well, it's the future of soccer. Uh, Stephen Wildwood is later. the chairman, and he is on, and he has thoughts. Oh, nice. uh, good morning, uh, Chairman Steve. Welcome to the Collier and Thompson phone lines. Hey. Uh, Steve, <laughs> good morning. What's the good word? I'm like a cyborg today. No, you're good. Yeah, you're good. yeah, that's been corrected. All right, All right cool. Hey, uh, if you cannot pronounce the name of the tournament, then you're uninformed. <laughs> but I will say, I wasn't really talking about the chant part of it. It's just when you guys always crap on whatever they're doing, like, tournament-wise. And I don't understand it either, but it's apparently what goes on in all these soccer leagues. They play in all kinds of tournaments within the, within the season. They're trying to replicate that, and I understand that part of it. But I don't, like, crap on all of it. I, I just said it's stupid. I didn't crap on it. I said it's stupid. <laughs> well, isn't that kind of no, the same? You're, you, you go beyond that. <laughs> I mean, like, you, you guys do. It feels like... <clears throat> I, I just want to have a conversation about it. It feels like the two of you, Plowsy and Iggy in particular, you crapped on a lot. I get that. But you guys do kind of the same thing on social media and outside the show. Like, the stuff you were doing with Lisa and Iggy was over the top and kind of, I don't know why you would do that. It's kind of what listeners do to you. And I don't know why you would do that. And like Plowsy, what you like commenting on Ackerman and kind of trolling him. I thought that was like, why would you do that? I mean, Ackerman's a nice guy. He's great. He hasn't done anything to you, but like, why would you? He's doing his job. I mean, like, he, but he also to, said, this is the guy you this. signed. And from 20, like 2006, 2007, that's just not accurate. That's all I'm saying. I wasn't like ripping him. But you can't yeah, but mislead sure random cool. fans by saying this is the guy you get when he's 15 years older than Al. Right. Yeah, come on now. You, <laughs> you commented like that to kind of troll him. I mean, it Agreed. Was, I, I can agree with yeah, that. I mean, yeah. but, but you guys do the same thing that listeners do to you outside the show. And it's like, I sometimes I'm like, wh why would you do that? And you guys are the first to say, if you don't like something, just don't comment on it. And that's kind of how I go about things, you know, especially on social media. But you guys don't. Do, do, am I saying this right, or do you guys agree? Or no, you gave me, you gave one example, and that yet that's a bad example because uh, <laughs> I was just going after her after she went after me. So, you know, I'm not doing anything that. Uh, but she she didn't go after you. Again, you know, like that was over. That was like what six months ago or whatever. Well, she I mean, posted. Wild, she posted but... the video, so I commented on it. And if you go back and well, look at the comments, it wasn't to you. It if wasn't you go commented to you, well, the, she had like a thousand responses to it, so it had to be to somebody. Well, you put it up there and say, "Don't comment on this." And I wasn't the only one. You go back and look at the comments. About fifty people mentioned Pornhub, and oh, I think I've seen this one before. Stepmom and the cops. I just made a, a little funny comment about it. I think I've seen this one before when it was funny. It cop. was not funny. I mean, that was not funny Well, maybe not funny to you like, because your butt hurts. She's not part of the show anymore. I'm sorry. Oh, I can't believe he's making fun of our really. girl. Just move to, some, move to something else. You, put, you pointed out one thing. I don't, I don't make it a point to go trash people on, on Twitter for no reason yeah, at all. Too, yeah. All right, go, oh, go find some that I, that I did for no reason at all. Don't do that. <laughs> for no reason at all. Who's going to be sending right in there, screenshots? Swope is on alert. I can't wait for the cringe. <laughs> go ahead. Now, with Steve, on my point, I, I think I agree with Steve, but I'm pretty open about I troll on Twitter. I don't think I tried to, to hide behind any moral high ground here i don't i don't think i do that and if i do i i and then I, I then maybe I, I should stop that but that's that's the whole thing and with the ackerman thing i'm with you it was a little bit of a fun little troll draw i love ackerman but the video literally was grainy it, 
<laughs> I mean, it's like if Willie McGee signed today for as a player and they showed his highlights in the 80s, it's like, okay, well, you're actually getting a guy that, like, almost has a cane. You know what I mean? Like... To me, it was just misleading. I don't. It wasn't his character. I wasn't demeaning him in any way. But that video was 16 years old, and I think it's a little bit pushing a narrative that isn't there. And that was all. And we, uh, I think, on the Twitter thread, I think Ack and myself found common ground, which is always good. But you are correct. I did that. It was 6:15 in the morning. Of course, I'm trolling. You think I'm trying? <laughs> you think I'm trying to go intellectual that early? But you, you are correct. I. Sometimes so I, whether I don't follow what, what whether I you're, said. Whether you're, whether you're right or not, I don't care. I mean, what Me I'm either. saying is you guys say you don't like it when people kind of troll you on the show, and then you do it outside the show, which kind of seems disingenuous to me. I mean, this is just my observation. I know Iggy's just going to argue everything because he does, <laughs> but, like, Iggy, you've done it multiple times. Now, do I have all the examples? No, but that's how you argue things. You will give me more than one example. And well, that's I'm, what I'm, I'm asking you. You, you gave me an example but, that made but, no sense, but I've gone through my last 20 tweets, and I've been nothing but nice to people on there. So. <laughs> oh, God. Text box it's, says it's, otherwise. Okay. Oh, sure right. they have. Yeah, they have. You're, really, you're really challenging everybody. I'm not going to do it just because I don't want to waste my time with it, but I, I generally feel that you've done that before. But you kind of, like when you dislike somebody or someone challenges you it's just like with me you you say things to troll me too even when i'm not even trolling you but you know i've, I've made an attempt recently to kind of back away a little bit just because yeah i, I that. don't really care <laughs> yeah. that much i don't i don't really care that much. i i just want to i with the lisa ann thing really the one question i have though is if she was so horrible to you and such a terrible person to you why would you text her for advice and for help. That's like the last person I, I was asked. I was help. asked to do that. So it, was it wasn't my, it wasn't help for me. Poorly. It wasn't help for me. It was help for somebody else. It doesn't matter who, it's, who the help is for. Why would you text her? Like people I don't enjoy or have treated me poorly. <laughs> I don't text them for any advice or help whatsoever. Get my snack I back. cut them out of my life. Well, I, I I don't after one one or two times because she's part of the show and I just put up with it. But when you berate me on the air, no, that, I'm not going to put up with that. That was the last straw, and I've had it. Okay. And that I, and, I and I thought she, to be honest, I thought she went too far. But I do think, like, if you would have done what Tim did and kind of apologize immediately and say, "I'm sorry, I should have gotten back to you," instead of saying. I had to go get turtle necks. I think that would have ended it sooner. You know, I think I, 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 think I think I did on the air. Wrong. I mean, you guys, you guys keep forgetting about that yeah, whole call when I when I said I was sorry. I said I just got so busy and forgot about it. I didn't ignore you. I apologize. I don't know what more you want me to say. Hey, I'm sorry. You you don't have an explanation attached to your I'm sorry. Well, there was, there was an explanation. There was an explanation. I just ignored you. Sorry. No, there was an explanation to it. You'll, you'll never understand, Iggy. That's why you get in these oh, fights yeah. with people. You don't know how to apologize. You just apologize and say, I'm sorry. Whether you are you think you're right or not, if you want to continue a relationship or if you want something to end like someone berating, berating you like that, you just say, I'm sorry. But I've been married for 25 years, so I know how to do this. Uh, did you hear her say that when I asked her, I said, are you going to apologize to me? What was her response to them? You're joking, aren't you? No, she said you, no. You she said no. I'm not apologizing apology. to you. She no, asked for one. She asked for one for me. I'm sorry to end that, and then eventually you guys talk it out and have a serious conversation about it, and then maybe she apologizes. But you don't. You don't understand how to do that. The other thing is, by the way, I was kind of happy. I don't know why, Tim. Like when when I was raising my kids, you got to do whatever the hell you wanted and go to Vegas and all that. But when you had to make a choice of whether to come home or to play golf, it kind of made me happy. I don't know. <laughs> Is that bad? What are you? No, no, no. I to, actually, I think I know where you're going. I'm just trying to think of when when that happened. When I had to come home and last week. I'm playing with and the Colonel and James. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Well, I, it was it was yeah. That's in the future and on April second. That's why. But yes, I I don't blame you. I look at that time because i'm obviously you don't know what you don't know like nobody on the show right now knows what it's like to be a parent 
you know. So it's not anybody's fault that they don't know that. And in some cases, it, 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 Iggy's case, you know, could be a choice. And Plowhawk, you and Madison may make a choice not to have kids. I imagine Jackson will be a father, and I can certainly see KG in O-Town being a father. And Doug's not here today, but he has been. But I'm sure for a lot of people, because I was doing it in my 30s, and that's so rare, especially in St. Louis, where you have somebody in their 30s, and you don't, and but they're married, don't have kids, and then they're going out and kind of living almost like this life of a retiree. So if if I take myself back to like my peers who are in the midst of raising kids around the ages of my kids now, I would either have thought, what the hell is this guy doing? Does he have a cocaine problem, or for real, like I, I like dead serious? Like if you're going to Las Vegas and South Florida that much. You've got to be hooked on junk, uh, and then and then going. He must just be like on some kind of tailspin for real. Like I look back on that and I go, the fact that we used to stay out in Las Vegas for like ten to to, to fourteen days at a time while I was working is insane to me. And I, all I would do is play poker too. And my wife would sit at the pool and I'd play poker, and that's just what we did. And I go, I can't. I mean, I was like thirty five. The hell. So yes, anybody who's been listening a long enough time is like, good, now you got your comeuppance, and I don't blame you for feeling that way, Steve. I think it's quite natural. Okay. I was, I was just smiling when you were saying that. It was just like, because like, we're in a point now in our life where we have all the time in the world to do whatever we want. You know, it's, it's, uh, although, although I got the gout this morning now after my long oh. weekend of drinking and hanging oh, out. Bill. Oh, so I, I don't know, you know, I was, I was wondering about that whole thing because I got to do what a lot of people, and you're going to get to do it in your 50s, which is great, but a lot of people wind up doing it in their 60s, maybe 70s. So I did it, again, all of this was accidental, in part because I didn't know any better, and then also, I mean, we were trying to have a family and we just couldn't. Uh, and, and she wasn't able to get pregnant until 2017, but that just has a, a, a lot to do with m my inability to get hard. So for all, all of my 30s, I'm, I'm not playing golf at all. I think I played five rounds of golf in my 30s, played poker and went out and drank and, and had a great time. And now in my 40s, I'm raising kids the ages people normally do in their 20s or 30s. So therefore, I won't get to do in my 50s in early 60s, what many people, especially St. Louisans, will do. You know what I mean? Because you kind of get to a point where, like, you're, you've got your kids are older and you get to have the freedom to do whatever the hell you want. And that's a foreign concept to me now because I did it all in my 30s. I don't know which right. one's better is what I'm oh, saying. Um, I would say the, the good thing with you and your, your 20s and 30s is you are making enough money to support that lifestyle. You know, I would say in my 20s, I had a short period where I was single with no kids, but I didn't have much money. You know, now I'm in my 50s and I'm better off, you know, like, because all our kids are out of college right now. Yeah. As of two years ago. The only thing is, like, we are expecting our sixth grandchild uh, anytime now. Oh, is that right? Mazel tov. Yeah, yeah. So we'll be able to have three boys and three girls. And I would say I kind of wish that would have started later than right now because we spend a lot of time with them. Not that I don't want to, but I wish like like right now they were starting to have kids because it kind of interferes with some of our fun, you know. The, the, but, uh, I got to tell you something, Steve, and I apologize for interrupting, but I have, no, you're fine. I have had, uh, and I'll include my father in this, but it's from a different perspective, but you are now the third person uh, who has, but tip of the cap to you for uh, doing it publicly, who've kind of said that, love grandkids, don't get me wrong, however, in particular for the grandmother, your wife in this case, once you have grandkids and you're a grandfather and you may be looking to enjoy retirement or, you know, the fact that you have a little more freedom, it's almost like you're back to being a parent ex except you don't have the 24-hour-a-day responsibilities because your wife, and this isn't, of course, only the wife, I'm sure sometimes there's overlap, is, and I know this is the case with my mom. Like, she texted me last night. I sent a picture from, we went to, oh, I got, were you at uh, Francis Park yesterday? I, was, I saw uh, the brewery, and I'm wondering if Steve's there, because we were there with our boys at the playground. 
and it was a pony. I was there last week. I know. That's why I was <laughs> thinking of you. Yeah. I saw one from PP Corp, as a oh, matter of fact. What a great when American. I was uh, when we were when we were getting to the park. Point being that I send that picture to my parents last night, and my mom's like, oh, I wish we were back in town. We would have hung out with you. And I'm like, you're in Hilton Head for like five months. I'll, I'll be happy to <laughs> trade with you if you're interested. I mean, what in the hell, you know? But that, but that, and my dad, under no circumstances, would want to be back here. I mean, it doesn't matter what's going on. He, you know, he just went, Timmy, I just want to go out there. I just want to look at that golf course because it made all the crap I put up with all my life worth it. That's what he wants to sit in a chair and look at a golf course. That's all he wants to do. <laughs> and my mom wants to be here with the grandkids and so what i'm saying is as people have grandchildren the the grandmother oftentimes wants to be back in st louis or if you are in st louis be around the grandkids whereas the grandfather is like okay i've already done this i enjoy them but i have other things i want to do and in your case you're younger but especially if you're like you know and whatever whatever age one starts to feel like they're on the clock they don't want to be sitting around and you know going to watch a five-year-old you know kick a soccer ball around or something like that you know what i mean oh completely i'm uh, completely like we have this will be our fourth grandchild in st louis and then we have two in arizona and uh which is nice. We get to go visit out there, which we've been doing for a while since we had kids go to school out there too. But like, we can't move anywhere. I mean, we're always going to have home base in St. Louis because I don't think you know, with the jobs that the two kids who are in St. Louis have and the grandkids here, we're, we're not going to leave. But it's funny. My 24 year old just moved to St. Pete, but his goal is to come back to St. Louis eventually, you know, I, which, it, which intrigued me. Cause he's you're like, talking about like, job. as in the, St. Petersburg, Tampa? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. Okay. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. He he uh he lives in this high rise kind of similar to ours down here in uh St. Pete that they just built. And that that area is like crazy like cool. I mean like they're it's kinda hipster but old too. Like you you when you go around like to the bars and restaurants, it's a, it's an interesting mix because you got a lot of young people moving there. And then there's old people who've been going there forever, you know, for the winters. So it's uh, it's interesting. It's a it's a really cool place. I don't know if you guys have been there much. I haven't spent as, as uh, much well, Florida time as I've been. I haven't spent a lot of time in Tampa. I've been there. It's a uh, uh, Tampa. I'm fifty fifty on St. Pete and like Ybor City is really cool. I, I lump them together, which I shouldn't do. Yeah, St. Pete and like that Ybor area. That like that's cool. Tampa itself, like Gasparilla is fun, but I don't love Tampa as much. But it's a cool I can area. See that. St. Pete is really cool. But, I mean, have you been there within the last year? No. Nope. I mean, like, we went there twice in two years, but, but now we'll go more because he moved down there. But it, it, like, changes every time you go down there. I mean, it's better every time. Like, you know where Ferg's is? I don't. Jackson? I don't. That's like the bar that feeds right into their baseball stadium. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I know. I, I've heard used- many a story. There used to be nothing around there. Right. Like, and now it's extended past it, you know, like that whole avenue. Well, it's right it off the highway there, right? Going and going. It's right off the yeah. highway. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it's a cool area. But don't get then, me wrong. And the West Coast is building yeah. up a little more younger as the years go by. It used to be all old. Oh, yeah. Like, I was down there to see a young person outside of, like, the campus area was nuts. Uh, with regard to and the uh, parenting thing where you were uh, discussing, Stephen Wildwood, or your, your enjoyment of the fact that I couldn't play golf with the Colonel and James Carlton, uh, I went I'll through... I'll play the- with him. Yeah, you ought, to, you ought to join now that I, th- I think you're trending. I think you're going to be dangerous this year, especially if I were giving you like 15 pops. Uh, I went through this. I didn't have my first kid until I was 37, and the next at 38, and we did the same thing. We traveled extensively, did what we wanted, and both of us had a lot of success in our careers prior to kids, so we had the means to do what we wanted. Now I'm 41 and have a three- and four-year-old, and I'm living a completely different life, but I love it, and I wouldn't change it. That's from Cuck Supreme. The only thing that I can relate to out of that specifically is I think if we would have had kids... Um, when I was in my 20s, or if I would have had kids, I should say, when I was in my 20s, I personally do not think I would have had the maturity to be a good father. And so I am enjoying it now because of being in a different mindset. And I'm not saying it's age for everybody because I think my maturity is incredibly uh, arrested r- with regard to development. So they're pl- like Jackson would be fine being a father now. I would not have been... At 25, so it just—I think it's a case-by-case basis. 
But the fact that you don't know what's coming when you become a parent allows you to enjoy this ignorance of like, oh, we've got the ability to travel and drink and go out. How come our friends don't do this? Oh, because they have kids, but you don't know that until you become a parent, so you're kind of ignorant. So I don't know if I'd rather be able to do it in my 30s or 50s. It doesn't matter. I wound up doing it in my 30s, and, and I will be, uh, I'll be 60 with like a 17-year-old or something, so that'll be great. Yeah, I mean, it's, I, and I think, too, it's personalities. You know, some people are just built to be parents, and some people aren't. But, you know, I was kind of, I'm different than a lot of people because I was 22 when I uh, knocked a girl up who lived above me in my apartment complex, and uh, I had no relationship with her whatsoever. We didn't even know each other, and then we're stuck with this kid who ended up, he ended, he's in, finished medical school he's in his residency now so he turned out just fine god bless but it, and then i married you know someone who had a four and a seven-year-old so i was 26 years old i had two four-year-olds and a seven-year-old that lived with me you know one lived part-time and the other's mostly full-time and then we had our another kid before i was 30 so i mean i was four boys when i was under 30 and i was way different than any of my friends like my friends now who I was hanging out with in my twenties are just getting kids into college. You know, it's, yeah. it's a different, different world. But, yeah. uh, but then, you know, I, I had a weird thing too. My, my wife got cancer when I was 32 years old. So we had all these young kids and she went through a uh, cancer treatment. She's fine now. But like, that was like, that's probably the stress that led me to gambling again, but, uh, but no, it was a, it was a crazy time. I mean, like, like, I, I guess, I don't know. It, it kind of prepared me to, to kind of expect the unexpected and that's kind of how I live my life. So, but that, the other thing you, you were talking about with your parents, it's like my wife will not move anywhere else in St. Louis. I mean, I, it's just with these, all these yeah, here. that's the deal. That's and it's one of those things. And I realize there aren't a lot of grandparents probably in our audience, but you are one, a younger one, and it's something that I never even thought about. But I, I really do. I honestly feel terribly for my dad because all he wants to do is be there year round. Oh, I would never be able to. Your mother would never let me do that, Timmy. You know, but you know, I mean, it's not to say he doesn't enjoy his grandkids. I mean, God, he he loves it, but no, totally not. But he he wants to. He just doesn't. You know, he just wants to be able to spend his time there and. You know, you got to come back for things that deep down I know he couldn't care any less about. <laughs> and I got to tell you, I love that. I love that he's unapologetically, it's like I already raised four. I want to, this is, this is my time and your mother's time now. This, and I'm like, good for you. God bless. Enjoy it as much as he possibly can. He'll be uh, marrying off my little sister here uh, in a month and a couple of days. And, uh, I am. I'm super happy for my sister, for certain. But I'm also incredibly happy for my parents. So, uh, I hope he can just sit there and stare at the golf course all he wants. You know. Yeah. Are you going to Hilton Head again this summer? I'll be. Yeah, there I think so. I think so. We're going to go. Uh, yeah, at the end of June and be down there for Fourth of July. My brother Kevin's going to go down there with his wife and his son, who's the same age as my older son. So we'll be down there. And are you going to be down? We can ball strike. Especially, I, I think. Yeah, I, I think I, I would lose uh, money to you right now. 20, yeah, with my 19.5, but I think... It's well, yeah, I'm down. operating on the premise that I'm going to be giving you pops, but if you do want to go straight up, we can do that. That's up to you. No. Okay, no. All right. I've that done seems that like before, that's off the table. it didn't work out well for me. Oh, so, and it's a callback. <laughs> and it's a callback. <laughs> well, I, I said it was unfair. I offered to give you strokes, and you said no. You can go back to the tape. <laughs> was on a skeleton a few weeks ago, and I, heard it and I said, he's going to play me you straight did, up. You did say that. Right. I, I agree. I agree. I said that. The problem is... You changed the story as you went along afterwards, and you started killing me like I like you you whooped my ass, and that kind of pissed me off. But we can get past that. I'm I'm fine with whatever. But uh, I want to play again, though. Yeah, I would love to play again. But uh, but if you're if you're willing, because I want my two hundred back. Are you willing to have a rematch with sure. Stephen Wildwood? Sure. All right. Nice. Oh, I love this. Going to take the money and run. He deserves a rematch. He wants to play again. We'll play again. Will there be pops given, or yeah. I'll be straight up again? Depends on the handicaps. Sounds right like now. a couple of pops yeah, we'll are going to go be going back. Steve's way. Well, I, I didn't have. I. I didn't. To be fair, I didn't have a handicap when that was going on. Like I didn't. I just started playing golf. I've never in my life played as much golf as I had. And then this winter, I've played like 
two or three times a week every I week. I know that's why I'm. Yeah, that's why you're going to be. That's why you're going to be dangerous. Although I think people in general in St. Louis, assuming the weather holds like this for the next forty-five days, are going to be able to score lower uh, throughout the golf season because people are able to get out and play. You know, in the month of February, that's huge. Are you playing anybody in the Fan Page Club Championship? Yeah, I'm playing uh, KG, KG, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. So I said Lix isn't going to play, so I need somebody to play with. I, I was texting with I was texting with Lix when you were talking about all that, and he sounded pretty serious that he was going to play. So wow. I don't know. I'm surprised. Know, he strikes exactly me as a guy who does not want to uh, go get out from his cloak of anonymity, Steve. I think he likes the attention, though, and I think he wants to. Wants <laughs> See, to get more. he has been oh, texting not, in this morning. No chance. Brianna asked Iggy to text her. No chance. Mm -hmm. Angela, how do you pronounce it? Angia? Angela is nice this time of year. So I am pretty sure that Tim talked to Caden, and Caden said. Uh, something about um, she's coming out to see Caden. Um, Brianna said, I really don't know what's going on. I don't know how I'm doing something. So it was a, I mean, I got nothing out of it. It's not like I'm saying I'm taking 10% of what you get if I do this. It oh, was just boy. helping her out. That's That's your standard. Standard. That would have been a nice hit. Yeah. I wonder, I, God, I, I wish you guys could get her back on. I want to see how it's going now. We, which, I mean, what I are we talking about? Lee, Lee Zan, Brianna? Yeah. Brianna? Actually, oh, you get her Brianna. On? Yeah, I was. Yeah, I, I think you guys should have her on and see what how, what her membership is now and what she's been doing. I'd, I'd like an update. That'd be good. Yeah, I'd be curious if the surge, yeah. you know, has uh, subsided. I agree with you on that. We'll see her on Black it's Raw it, in a couple months. You think so? Mm -hmm. It's interesting. I was talking to a guy this weekend. Guy's in his thirties. One of his best friends is married. And expecting a child, but they were out like they were visiting friends of theirs out of town. And they all went, and this guy, his best friend, or one of his best friends, was on OnlyFans, like paying girls, like spent like $300 over the weekend mm. paying girls. And he's in his, it was the weirdest thing to me. Like, the guy's a good looking guy. You know, like, I don't. I don't understand that. It's like, it's like I guess it's like is virtual. Is it, you think you think Steve's kink shaming this gentleman? This right is fin dom, financial domination. I'm, I'm I'm not kink shaming. I'm saying, is it is that just the way you go to a strip club now, like on your phone? Well, are they? Is you he know? paying them for like photos, or is it just give me money? Because like, both of them would be kinks. like the like the girls uh, are. You know, they'll take off clothes if you send them money, and he's in there with a group of guys. And I didn't even know what it was. It was being explained to me. I've never been on OnlyFans. I don't think I'll ever go on there. Yeah. It's just like, but I, but I was like, I was talking to the guy, and I'm like, but doesn't he, I mean, there's free porn everywhere. Why would you, why would you do that is what I'm saying. I mean, I, I'm not shaming him for doing it i just don't understand it at all you know I one mean, of the like, things there... and this is this is under the umbrella of the only fans conversation and i'm certain we've talked about this lisa ann might have actually said it on the show that part of the only fans thing isn't just seeing porn it's the sense that you are actually interacting with the adult star and of course as we have discussed Oftentimes, it's just a guy who's hired to interact with people. So you have that, and then you also have the kink of uh, getting your uh, ween ratings, and gentlemen send in pictures of their love, and then they think an adult star is reviewing it and then giving them feedback. And as it turns out, and Caden told me this, this was off air, that guys actually want to be told how small they are. <laughs> So that is the kink. It is some kind of uh, submissive kink to pay an adult star to then text them or leave a voice message about how small their uh, love is, and they'll pay whatever, $50 or something for that. So I'm sure for probably 99% of the audience, that seems absolutely ridiculous. Uh, that, of course, would be kink shaming. But it is, uh, it is a common way for those who have gotten traction on OnlyFans to make money. Okay, I don't. I still don't understand it or why you would do it, but whatever. I mean, I I don't care if people do it. I was just like thinking to myself, like this guy is. I mean, he's pretty recently married. Like when I was recently married, I was like, 
I mean, not that I don't love my wife, but God, we were a lot different when we were recently married. You know, I didn't, there was no need for me to go on OnlyFans or watch porn or go to strip clubs when we were recently married because I was so into my wife. You know, I, I just, I don't get like doing that at that point in your life. Like, Everyone's I can different. understand if the guy's Everyone's been married. Different. Well, if that was the case, nobody, years, if that was the case, nobody would be on OnlyFans. All these girls would have no followers. Yeah, but I'm, I'm just saying, Iggy, like, you're that into a person and you just, like, you know, vowed to be with, with them for the rest of your life. And within two years, you're already on OnlyFans doing it like that. Well, I mean, you need a little strange every once in a while, I guess. I guess so. I mean, I just don't operate that way. But, and I, you know, I, like, I, I mean, even if my wife allowed me to have sex with somebody, I'd still consider it cheating. It would feel like cheating to me, but that's just how my mind is, is set up. I mean, I know yeah, you... Yeah, I remember you saying that when we were talking about something one time, and I'm like, okay, I mean, I, I just... I, I absolutely disagree with you there, but I, I suppose if you just view sex with someone else purely, if that is the act of cheating, then I totally understand where you're coming from. To me, the act of cheating is betrayal of trust. So I would tell you that... Uh, if, for example, I consented to my significant other having sex with somebody else, and they did, then, then God bless America. But if I did not consent to some kind of, you know, DM conversation or text conversation where there's emotional involvement, I consider that to be cheating. And I think more people would actually be of that opinion, but I don't know. It's not a contest. But I, but I think that's where people, I think in 2024 anyway. Um, but I could be off the mark on that. No, you're right. It's like the cuck. It's if you if you get cheated on, you're cucked. If she says no, go ahead. Well, it's not a cuck because she gave you permission. Same thing as cheating. I, I share I, that. I opinion. get I get I I get what you're saying. I just can't do it in my mind. Right. Like like personally, but I I don't care if people do it. But I like we talked about it. Like Mr. Smith is a good example, and I was like, you know, I I still consider it cheating, whether it's you allow it or not. You're still with somebody else, but that's me. I mean, I know they they don't mind it, and they're fine with it, and that's good good for them. But I still, I would label it as cheating in my mind. Yeah, I know. I just, I, 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 I get, I don't know. I mean, if, I don't know. If just if, 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 the, if the communication between the two parties is, all right, yeah, it's cool if you want to do that, then I'm good with it. Or, in some cases, if it turns the party on, then I don't know. I just don't, I don't, I don't. I don't know. I just don't see it that way. But again, no, no, no matter what, we're not, we're never going to agree on it. I, I respect where you're coming from. I just don't see it that way. Hey, Steve, we got to go. But a wonderful phone call as always, and uh, great to hear right, you boys. and Iggy will be having a rematch. You guys have a do have a good day. Go doggies. There he is. Uh, there's Chairman Steve in Wildwood, Milagro, Tequila, Listener of the Year, 2023, on the Collier and Thompson. Phone line, 636-9004-TMA. Do you want to support the EDF Group as a sponsor of TMA? It's real simple. Do you have a fire extinguisher where you work? The answer is yes, you certainly do. So please email the EDF Group at fire at the EDF Group.com so a technician can come out and explain to your team how the EDF Group can save your company money. Again, that email address is fire at the EDF Group.com. The EDF Group is hired and will prevent your facility from having hired fires. Experience the EDF Group difference. Learn more at the EDF Group.com. Jackson, tell me about Mark Hanna of Evergreen Wealth Strategies. Do it. I work with Mark Hanna personally, Tim, and I can tell you firsthand how much I really enjoy working with Mark Hanna because going into it, younger guy, I didn't really know what to do in terms of finances, savings, I, you know, you do a 401k, I don't know anything about all this stuff, I don't know what I'm doing. You get on the phone with Mark Hanna, he explains it all so well. He learns about you, the individual, so he can make a custom plan for you that works best for you. Now, let's say something in your life changes. We just talked about having children. That's obviously a major life moment, getting married. All these different things can change how you plan for your financial future. Well, you get on the phone with Mark Hanna, you talk to him and he'll talk you through what the best plans going forward for you are. That's how he handles it. He conveys his message so well to his client and that's why I love having Mark Hanna in my corner. If you're looking to start off 2024 right as we enter the third month, you know, still in the first quarter of the year here, a great way to have a great 2024 starting to work with the great Mark Hanna. Evergreen Wealth Strategies, 314-889-0503 or go online at Evergreen S. T L dot com. And want to make sure that I let people know that uh, one of the best times to get a gift of jewelry is just 
Because not for a holiday, not for a birthday, not for an engagement. Sure, those are great times to do it. But what about just because? And Glenn Betts Jewelers is an advocate of going to Glenn Betts Jewelers just because. Because imagine how much that would mean to your significant other if you got them something from Glenn Betts Jewelers just because. Glenn Betts Jewelers is located on Manchester, about a mile east of the 270 in Manchester exit. And there is plenty of parking right behind the building. It's Glenn Betts Jewelers in business in St. Louis since 1941 and now operated by the third and fourth generation of the Betts family. The Glenn Betts difference is you are served personally, not sold. Glenn Betts Jewelers develops relationships through generations of your family as well. And they get to know your likes, your lifestyle, and who and what you love. Those are the three L's. They're online at G-L-E-N-N-B-E-T-Z Jewelers.com. It's Glenn Betts Jewelers, located one mile east of 270 on Manchester in De Pere. In the jewelry business, there is good, there is better, and then there is Betts. It's Glenn Betts Jewelers. Just because what a perfect gift it would be just because send your emails in for our design air heating and cooling email today comes your way at 9 45 the morning after at insidestl.com james carlton will be in studio in our schaefer door nine o'clock hour and jackson and i will deal with the situation down the hallway at 10 o'clock uh that program is called balloon party and it's driven by munganess st louis Acura and munganess burkhardt alton toyota no qfta today uh, Plowhawk Sound Story, right? Sound Story at 1130. Uh, That's right. So we'll be sound storying it. Uh, so we've got that coming up. Uh, we'll, we'll do one uh, tomorrow or Wednesday. So send your emails in for QFTA, T-M-C-K-E-R-N-A-N at InsideSTL.com. Had a really good one. A really good one. I really want to read it, but again, it was a burner. And mm. so I contacted the gentleman and said, we have a policy on the program. We'll, we'll, keep, your, we'll keep your name if you want anonymity. That's fine. But we need to make sure that the, the emails that are read are non-burners, that we have to know, you know, so we don't have a burner festival. So I reached out to the person, uh, and uh, hopefully we can, we can read because it was a good one. I might even discuss it on TMA, but I need a confirmation on that. Tim McKernan at InsideSTL.com. We'll close out the Munganass St. Louis Acura, Munganass Burkhardt Alton Toyota, 7 o'clock hour. This is TMA presented to you by Brown and Crouppen. Live from the Michelob Ultra Studios, KPN TFM HD2, Collinsville, St. Louis. This is TMA All Day. Hey, this is Tim McKernan, and I am here with a great TMA sponsor, and that is Longo Biggs Injury Law Firm. And you may hear a bunch of out of state law firms advertising here and there, all over on billboards, and so on and so forth. But the thing is, Oftentimes, their goal is to just settle and move on, and that's not what you guys do. Yeah, this is C.D. Longo, and you hear us talking a lot about maximizing the value of cases, but what does that actually mean? Well, as Tim said, there's lots of personal injury lawyers in St. Louis, and everyone handles cases differently. We focus on getting the highest dollar amount for your injuries, not just getting a resolution quickly. We're constantly tracking all the settlements and verdicts in the area. This helps us advise our clients on whether a settlement offer is too low. And if the amount of compensation being offered is too low, we are happy to file lawsuits and proceed to trial to ensure our clients receive an amount that is fair. Visit our website or Google us at Longo Biggs Injury Law. The choice of a lawyer is an important decision and should not be based solely upon advertisements. When we think of a real estate agent, we think of somebody simply selling our home or finding us a new one. I mean, they're all the same, right? Okay, here's the comps. We'll take some pics, we'll post them, and uh, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll get back to you, okay? A home is life-changing, and your real estate agent should reflect that. Honesty, integrity, and someone who will go above and beyond to make your dreams come true. The Jeff Lightman Group with Compass Realty. We're different because you're different. We want what you want. Experience the difference today at JeffLightman.com. Bringing people and properties together. Hey, this is Tim McKernan, and I am here with Seth Goldcamp of Design Air Heating and Cooling, and I have been a longtime Design Air client. What separates you guys from everybody else? It's becoming more common for companies to just get their foot in the door. They try to come up with different ways to upsell. They try to see how much they can make off of a customer as opposed to, hey, we're in there to do a service. We're going to do it well. We're going to do it for a fair price. I don't know how many emails I have received from our listeners who experience the incredible customer service Design Air Heating and Cooling provides. It's Design Air Heating and Cooling, online at designairservice.com. Temperatures are finally warming up here in St. Louis. And while that means more fun in the sun, it could also spell disaster for your lawn. 
Rain equals spring weeds, and now is the best time to get ahead of it. Green Envy has been here in St. Louis for more than a decade, servicing and treating lawns just like they would their very own. Crabgrass can lay dormant for years until the conditions are right, and the massive amounts of moisture we've had is sure to wake up even the oldest crabgrass seeds. Green Envy only uses products that have been formulated for Missouri soil, weather conditions, and turf types, not national generic products that are insufficient and ineffective. Let the experts at Green Envy help you choose the best treatment program for your lawn this season. Phone lines are open 12 hours a day, Monday through Friday and Saturday 9 to 1 to take your calls and answer questions. Call Green Envy today at 636-757-1600 or visit GreenEnvyLawns.com and make your lawn the envy of the neighborhood. Biggie's Restaurant and Bar has been a staple of the community for over 30 years and is serving your favorites like the steak sandwich, waffle fries, and so much more. It's not just the food that's rocking. With a full bar and patio, Biggie's is the perfect spot for lunch, dinner, and a little laughter. Biggie's Original Hours are back. Open 11 a.m. till midnight, Wednesday, Thursday, and Sunday, and 11 a.m. till 1 a.m. on Friday and Saturday. Check out the full menu at Biggie'sRestaurant.com and stop in today. Urban Dictionary defines thirsty as purposely, knowingly, and recklessly attempting to gain fame to boost self-esteem. So, are you thirsty? Well, TMA has you covered. Become a part of the TMA Listener of the Month Club. You nominate yourself for a monthly award. And if you win, you get recognition and stuff to help you satisfy that insatiable thirst. We're talking January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, uh, etc. Go to TMASTL.com or the TMA app. Give us your name, a photo, and other pertinent information. Tell us why you deserve to be TMA Listener of the Month. And if you don't want to use your real name or photo, we don't really care. The TMA May listener of the month. Get recognized just for being you or fake you or whatever. Quenched by Milagro Tequila. Welcome to the brighter side of tequila with Milagro. In the morning after on KPNT HD2. Bet like the pros with the world's largest sports book right at your fingertips. Circus Sports is now available in Illinois. Hi, I'm Derek Stevens. I've been a lifelong sports better and I'm the owner of Circus Sports. We're excited that the Circus Sports app is now ready for action. Experience big app bets with high betting limits, tight money line splits, and more. Now you can download, fund, and bet like a pro from anywhere in Illinois. Download your new bookie today at CircusSports.com. If you or someone you know may have a problem with gambling, call 1-800-GAMBLER or text ILGAMB to 833-234. John, I'm so tired of this kitchen. We haven't updated anything since we moved in. The stove looks like it's from the 90s, and the rest of it. Are you even listening to me? Did you say something, honey? Yeah, yeah, no, kitchen's fine. We have cabinets. There's food in the cabinets. We're good. Woo! Guys, if this sounds a little familiar, trust me, your wife is probably right. It's time for a remodel. Collier & Thompson is the company to trust. Not just for kitchens and bathrooms, but for any interior remodeling job. Need a new man cave? Collier & Thompson. Office? Collier & Thompson. Bar? You got it. Collier & Thompson. They even do wine rooms and fireplace walls. Collier & Thompson is your go-to source for every design consideration. They carry the best cabinets, appliances, and countertops in the business. And better yet, it's all under one roof. No need to drive around to five to ten different businesses for one job. At Collier & Thompson, they do it all. Their showroom is on Manchester Road in Baldwin, right next to Uncle Bill's Pancake House. Let Collier & Thompson bring your dream remodel to reality and come home to quality. Online at CollierAndThompson.com. You're hearing TMA all day on KPNT HD2, Collinsville, St. Louis, featuring the morning after, live from 7 a.m. to 10 a.m., then a full show replay from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m., followed by the best of TMA from 1 p.m. to 7 p.m., and another same-day replay starting at 10 p.m. I spent four years in San Francisco. It's the Brown and Crouppen morning after. KPNT FM HD2, Collinsville, St. Louis. Missouri basketball. Another squeaker. <laughs> it was kind of a squeaker, wasn't it? I feel it, Ben. I got to be honest with you. I bet Ole Miss. I'm like, I just have a, I have a responsibility. Fiduciary. To my family. To my family. I'm like. The kids. I do. I, I just, I have to do this. It wasn't a large number, but you know what? I got to do it. Who did they finish out with? They got two, uh, they got two games? Uh, so it's I'm, I'm looking uh, now. I'm looking now. Me, Ooh, I'm just, Auburn under 11. Ward LSU. It's his. It's, it's, uh, On to the next one, right? Next year, I mean. Yeah. 
making a march for the college football playoff, and then, uh, and then we'll run it back with old Denny next uh, next fall. Next Denny. Early winter, and then we'll talk again. But uh, uh, We welcome you to give your thoughts. Uh, the Collier and Thompson phone line's buzzing today. New sponsor on the phone line, 636-900-4TMA. Who's going to be our first female on the Collier and Thompson phone line? So many to choose from. Oh, boy, so many options. I don't know who it will be, but the person who does it, great success. There's nothing but great success coming to him. If you're a female and you want to be the first caller, I'll Venmo you $25. There you go. How about that? I'm go. literally just giving $25 away. You talked about fiduciary responsibility. If you are in the car right now. Or yeah, like why wouldn't you just home. take, what do you think, I'm not going to pay you? Yeah. All day long. Uh, there you go. 636-9004-TMA. Uh, just call in, get $25, and you can hang up. I mean, it couldn't be any easier. I'm very transactional in my relationships. Uh, also, uh, the morning after is presented to you by Brown and Crouppen. Doug is vacationing in the Hamptons, but he still wants to tell you about Brown and Crouppen, Plowhawk. If you have a potential personal injury... I kind of like that, sorry. <laughs> I guess the music would just continue. If you have a potential <laughs> personal injury good, case, Brown and Crouppen is a local law firm here to serve you. We've all gotten to know Terry Crouppen and Andy Crouppen and Ed Herman very well in their appearances here on The Morning After. Wonderful guys, and the kind of guys you would like to have in your corner if you have a personal injury case. They'll give you that free evaluation. They'll work on a contingency basis. No upfront costs at all to you. If you don't get paid, they don't get paid. And they've won more than a billion dollars in compensation for the clients. They are the local law firm that is on your side. They've grown into one of the largest personal injury firms in the entire Midwest. If you think you may need Brown and Crouppen services, call them at 314-222-2222. Or go to brownandcrouppen.com. Make sure to let them know you heard about it here on TMA. Remember, the choice of a lawyer is an important decision and should not be based solely on advertising. Past results are no guarantee of future results, and every case is different and must be judged on its own accord. There it is, Doug Vaughn, uh, vacationing in the Hamptons, but speaking for our presenting sponsor, mm -hmm. Brown and Crouppen. I am speaking for Mentality, which is FDA-approved testosterone treatment with board-certified physicians who work with most insurance. Mentality, a local health care facility specifically dedicated to helping men feel and perform at their very best. They're online at Low T. USA.com. If you are feeling sluggish this Monday morning, but it's been a problem more than just this morning, or if you've been putting on weight, notice you haven't been able to put on muscle like you used to, those are symptoms of low testosterone. Go to LowTUSA.com. It doesn't matter what age you are. Low testosterone can be an issue with any guy. Even if you've tried testosterone before, not everyone understands the blood chemistry of men's bodies. Mentality can help. They're online at LowTUSA.com. Dot com. The normal range for testosterone is large. If you've been to a doctor and they told you that you were normal without understanding the range or testing your free testosterone, it was not fully looked at. Come get checked with Mentality at LowTUSA.com. That's Mentality at LowTUSA.com. Um, all right, they're saying they're not happy with me playing golf in the, in the YouTube chat. Ooh. Stop playing golf, Tim. I don't understand, though, but I, I got to get in the YouTube chat to see what... People are fun. I don't know what the conversation is. Unless they misunderstood and thought you're going to play golf instead of helping your wife pack. No, no, I, yeah, you're correct on that. I don't know if that was... What were we even talking about with me playing golf? We weren't. <laughs> Steve called in. Yeah, I'm confused as KG well. KG Notown, are you in there interacting? I'm trying to catch up on the chat. I'm not interacting, but I was just scanning it, and I, I someone asked, can Tim play golf just for fun? I don't get it. So I don't know if it has to do with gambling. I'm not really sure. Can Tim play golf just for fun? But yeah, what does that mean? I don't understand. I, goes, I, don't, understand I, don't, I don't think you're playing... Uh, I don't think you're playing Jameson for ten dollars a hole, are you? <laughs> I was on the range with the two-year-old yesterday for an hour. Long drive had competition. And to fight him to get him in the car. <laughs> Jameson's on Venmo. No, Dan, no, that's, that's how much the, did I lose? He's the six-year-old, yeah. the two-year-old. Uh, no, I don't, I don't know. I, but I don't know if I don't know if that can. I, I don't know if it meant like I'm not allowed to play golf. Like my, I, I don't know if that's what it means. I, but I got to find it. All right, Jake Reynolds said, "Give me San Diego any day." In Same thing of. here, Jake. I used to visit San Luis Obispo for work. Loved About four it. more down. Okay. Can Tim play golf just for fun? I don't get it. We don't get it. I don't get that. <laughs> I could not imagine hanging out with that dude <laughs> oh. in my life. Why was he right over the top? Yeah. <laughs> Incoming. 
<laughs> oh, you have fun? Why? I mean, I, I, you can still have fun and, and, okay. and play a little Nassau game. It's just make it a little more interesting. It doesn't mean you're not having fun if you don't play for money. I, will, I, I hope that maybe if this guy, I don't, I don't, I don't know, that, that if, if Bourbon Snob is the gentleman's name yeah. who asked that question. I don't know if the question's asked kindly or, you know, just to be one of the, you know, whatever, the way that the world works with uh, online discourse, but whatever, either way, I don't care. Uh, Jackson, Jackson and I played on Saturday, as a matter of fact. I would have, now, there was only $12 in exchanged hands after, I don't know if the, 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 the we played the, the quote, what we call the big game, so you can lose, you know, what is a decent amount of money, in my opinion, a few hundred dollars. Um, but, you know, when it's all said and done, $12, I would much, as weird as this sounds, this gives you an idea of how I'm programmed, which is not normal, and I recognize that. Uh, I would rather, if I would have shot, like, even par, but lost $150, I would have preferred that, as weird as that may sound. Mm -hmm. I prefer, all I really care about when it gets down to it is how I'm playing. Now, that was my first round since October, so I expected it to be crappy, but... Uh, and then I'm playing as a three handicap when I'm more like probably a 10 right now. Uh, and I shot an 84. So that tells you all you need to know. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I love, I just love being out there. Can't and what you I, just what play I for love, fun? What's that? Can't you just play for fun? <laughs> <laughs> what I love now and what I find is all I really like being out there is with my family. That's what I really enjoy more than anything. The fact that the two year old, all he, all he says is golf course, golf, that I, I can't have a conversation with him because he can't talk. He just turned two. But all he wants to do is hit balls. And that's the greatest thing in the world. And then my older son was with us. Mm -hmm. Jackson was with him uh, on Saturday. And, you know, he's, I, I just love being with him. That's all I care about. So I don't know. If, I hope that answers your question, Bourbon Snob. If not, uh, please feel free to call in. I'm sure you will. 636-9004-TMA. Actually, I'll offer you $25, too. I'm just giving it away, Jackson. Yep. Giving it away. That sounded like fun to me. It was fun. Yeah. yeah good time. But, yeah. I mean, I, I want to answer questions as well. No, you just answered it. He had a stupid question. You answered it. <laughs> uh -huh. oh, I'm sorry, Steve. I'm making fun of people again. 636-9004-TMA and Bourbon Snob will go to the front of the line. Then we'll have the lady. who. So I'm giving away $50 here in the next 10 minutes. 636-9004-TMA uh, is uh, so Bourbon Snob. All you got to do is just give me your Venmo and you get it. Uh, and then I'll be happy to... Uh, to Venmo you, and then the lady who calls in the Collier and Thompson phone lines. That is how you can be a friend of the feather. Iggy, you're not happy with somebody in the golf tournament you were saying? Oh, yeah, Pavan. <laughs> <laughs> Jeremy Piven. He was, uh, 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 Pavan was in uh, seventh place going to the 18th hole and uh, hit a drive, nice drive. He had a uh, 228 to the hole and uh, dunked it in the water, made a double bogey. So if he birdies that hole, which everybody's birdying, and he had a perfect opportunity to make eagle birdie, uh, he'd have been in fourth place. Instead, I'm going to make a double bogey. I'm in 28th place, and it's going to cost me money. You're talking about him? Yeah, well, it's going to cost him money, too. <laughs> it could be a fun it's one. It could be a fun one not to play all the time. It's going to cost him a bunch of money, but it's costing me about eight bucks, maybe. How about that? I, got, did, I checked it. Mark Hanna, out. Mark Hanna. Look, this just shows you how much fun I have just playing DraftKings. Uh, <laughs> this seems like a barrel of monkeys. <laughs> but the beginning of last year, the beginning of last year, I had like six bucks left in my account. So I, said, I better put some money in here for the year. So I just put 25 bucks in there. See how long it's going to last. I had like 30 bucks in there. Uh, I have not put any money in there since the beginning of last year. Profit and season. And, and, I'm at, and I'm at 50, I, got, I have $52 in there. So I've made money in the last year, not a ton. But every week going in, maybe there's an off chance playing my one team that I hit. Like this week, I was very close. If those two guys had played up to their capability, uh, there's a chance. Cause I had I, At one point yesterday, I had four guys in the top ten, and one was leading. So there's that chance, but I'm not losing money. I've made like 30 bucks in the last year, and I haven't had to put any more money in, and I just have fun playing every week. It's not profitable. Not a ton. Enough! Read the screenshots of Iggy trashing people online. Where, what are the screenshots of Iggy trashing people online? Uh, you have to go back. Yeah, fan page. Ugh. Oh, oh, already. Okay. Oh, KG, no time. You just said fan page. Ugh. I mean, it's... it's them's your people. I was about to say. Yeah. It can get a little toxic, yeah, but... Yeah, there's a thread well, going already. Well, on the show would feel that way, so that's kind of... Yeah. But you know, know, how are you going with I this? I don't know the context of it. Is it me answering somebody who's trashed me, or I'm not just going out of my way and trashing... If you want to call... Uh, me just 
tagging Max Homa because he said, or not Max You're Homa. yelling at Max Homa? Not Max Homa. Luck. Not Max Homa. Um, it's Taylor, you going after Taylor him. Gooch. Taylor Gooch, who said, oh, there should be an asterisk next to Warriors. And if he wins, the best players I don't even get to play. So I just put that Gary Player thing up, and I said, yeah, but those don't count for Gary Player because Taylor Gooch wasn't in the field. It's you going against uh, Mark Lai? Who's Mark Lai? Yeah, do you see what he said? I'm, I'm looking at it right now, yeah. Yeah, it was a response to him trashing the PGA because the leaderboard wasn't uh, to his liking. There wasn't guys, who are these guys? Nobody even knows who they are. And you wrote back the same thing people said when they saw your name on the leaderboard. Yeah, a little <laughs> shot at him. And then the next one is you going at Megan oh, Kelly. God. Megan Kelly? The the Fox News I, I That's the one. I don't think I was going after her. She, she was trashing she CNN. Now? She's not on Fox News. She went on NBC, had an observation on Santa yeah, Claus, and then on, that wrapped it up. I think she's on Fox Internet. <laughs> Fox Internet is what it's called? New, or News wow. Nation. I don't know what I else literally hope there's a board meeting. need to have a board meeting. All I know Fox is she's Internet. one of these people that, that go off if somebody uh, doesn't credit them. Ah, way to go. Getting the emails. We, the had them, we, had them, <laughs> we had them eight hours ago. You should credit us. And I said... And I, it was something like a, a shot at being pissed off because they didn't get credit. I said, what do you get for that? Like and then the last, first. The right, last so one. So there you go. There's a response to her. John Denton is next in line. John Denton's well, on the show. That was just that was just having fun there. <laughs> Viva la Stro! I didn't, I didn't trash him. He said... Well, Dan Thompson, which you could juke like this. Nolan Arenado had... Nolan Arenado got uh, thousands of texts. Or not Arenado, uh, Crawford. He said he got thousands of texts, and two of them were for former Cardinal shortstops who also played for San, San Francisco. I said, that's huge. I mean, it's just... Is that a big news story? So, so, so if you're saying I'm going off and I'm, I'm doing the same thing that I upset these people do to me, I mean, come on. But you, there you're, is you're a reaching now. There is a positive tweet in a response to Erica Swings, so it's not all negative. Oh, yeah, this There's is a good. lot of positive things. Look at <laughs> Erica Swings. There's a golfer who... who Toiled on the Corn Ferry Tour forever. And Erica Swings was coming? No, this Stinger. <laughs> Stinger. Or, or Stranger. Um, they called, they had, they suspended golf on Saturday because of, again, rain and darkness and, um, or Friday. <laughs> and Stranger, who I've, who I've followed because he finally won his first Corn Ferry Tour last year. He'd been on the tour for like 13 years and he finally got his card. This was his fourth term of the year and he had an eight footer. To make the cut, had to come back out Saturday and faced an eight footer to make the cut. And I just said, I hope he makes it. He's a good guy. He does a lot of stuff for charity. He does, you know, every time he makes a birdie, he gives money to charity. He's just a great dude. Um, so I said, I, I said, you got this. You're going to make this. And he did. And he's, he moved up like 30 spots. That made nobody comments on those things. Those are most of the kind of tweets I do. They're nice tweets. But these people want to pick out a couple where I'm just responding to somebody. I don't just go out of nowhere and start, hey, you suck. I don't just trash people for no reason. What about Luke Korak? Dave Portnoy. <laughs> well, that was a mistake. Well, Portnoy is a, just a vile human being. <laughs> and I just don't go out of my way. and It's something he posts that I respond to. So, again, it's not like I go out of my way and I'm just going to find somebody to start trashing. They've either done something or responded to them. If you think that's trashing Mark Lai, well, go read what he posted. That's why I responded. Mark Lai looks like somebody's grandfather on Twitter. Like his <laughs> like name is like all lowercase. <laughs> Played a couple rounds. He's got like yeah. a dumb pun as his handle. He seems like a... Yeah, he posted a picture of him and Fuzzy Zeller at a Super Bowl party. <laughs> that sounds like a... That's a grand... That was, it looked like a grandpa picture. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you can post those all you want. Say, hey, look what he went after Mark Lai. Good. Well, why don't you post what Mark Lai said, and I responded to him. For every one what Mark the Lai, there's Lansky five Erica Swing. Say? <laughs> Erica Swing, yeah. I, I, I've seen that come in. Yeah, I just like, respond to her by saying, hot. <laughs> if you need a cuck, let me know. <laughs> yeah, that's you supportive. Know, just being nice. I mean, I, I'm, I'm, nice, I'm more nice to people than I am. Riggs. What about Riggs? Well, I haven't said anything bad about Riggs in years. <laughs> there you go. After I met him. And I say the same myself. And I never trashed them and said, you guys suck. I'm basically saying I didn't like their style of coverage of golf, whether it's all, oh, Tiger touched our butt. You know, it's all like uh, just giddy. No, I wasn't into that. I'm one of the old school guys. I met him. He's a nice guy. Again, just you pick a couple out and Iggy's, Iggy's awful. Please right. expound on Portnoy being a, quote, vile human being. That's from the reluctant cuck. Well, have you ever seen some of the texts he sent to girls and some of the girls that he's been with that just said it was an awful experience? He choked me and 
was berating and then trash me and just, you know there's there's not just one or two there's like 10 or 20 I've changed my tune a little bit on Portnoy are you pro or anti I don't know where you are I think I'm indifferent might be the best way to to say it rescue the dog Mitt Peachin thing and the money he's doing for that is also a good thing. He's so using the platform for a little well, bit better. Know, what's, what, what he doing? adopted a dog uh, from, I think, the Atlanta area. It was like a 200 dog, like Big puppy pen mill that he saved, and all the money for the apparel he made of a dog went to that shelter. I think they got like quarter million dollars, something insane, awesome. So some similar, like All Paws Safe Haven does here. Yeah, locally. I wanted to make sure that like I shout him out because he. He finally using a little bit of a platform for good. I was on the Iggy thing, I, and I still don't find him very charming. Um, but he, I, I've changed my tune a little bit on the poor. Yeah, he's doing great things for people. He raised a lot of money for small businesses during COVID. During the he's pandemic, done, he's done was a lot a of huge good things, thing, but he's also yeah. a vile human being. Yeah, I think I'm indifferent. I think that's a good way to put it. I'm, I'm really tired of having to defend myself. <laughs> That's on the fan page now, so it's, it's big news. Fan page, ugh. <laughs> that should be a shirt. Yeah, that was an eye-opening <laughs> response for I, you. I mean, I like it 85% of the time, but 15% or so, it just gets a little unnecessarily nasty. <laughs> the autograph thread is actually the only thing I still like. It's from 2018, and it's still hitting. Like, it just that somebody... You know, <laughs> it's that, a thread that started in 2018. <laughs> we need more Ice House... Just 15 minute rants going oh, on. Man. State of the Union. <laughs> Here, let me give you something you, know, you, you can trash on the fan page again. And you may even call me a pervert for this one. <laughs> yep, <laughs> I'll get ready for the dump button. Are we, again, are we, we going to all full off air? <laughs> well, it's not a hot take. It's something, it was a dream. No, just now, I don't know reasons. where this dream came from because I wasn't thinking about any of this before I went to bed. But for some reason, I was waiting on Eric Roberts. Yeah, uh, you know him from the Mr. Brightside video. Yeah. yeah, and I've interviewed him a couple of times. He's a very kind man. Um, but I was waiting on him, and after they had dinner, he said, I need a banana split with seven bananas. I said, okay, and I'm trying to find seven bananas. I'm walking away. The next thing that happens is I'm, <clears throat> I'm stroking the beak of a duck. Cut that off. And then I take the side of the feathers and I'm stroking the hair and the duck starts talking. I love you so much. I said, I love you too. I was in love with a duck after waiting on Eric Roberts. Yeah, I screamed. Why am I? I'm in love with a duck. Like I was, I wanted to date this duck. Where's the text line? <laughs> Me go in there. Have I been like kicked in the head in the last minute and a half? <laughs> it's just a dream I had. I mean, I've never had a dream about being in love with an animal before. And waiting on Eric Roberts, and he wanted seven bananas. I remember the dream, the dream distinctly. I need seven bananas. Where am I going to find seven bananas? It's not going to fit in the bowl. And then I fell in love with a duck. People forget he was in the dark night. And pretty good. Should I call back in? He was quiet then. <laughs> bang, bang, fan page gang. <laughs> I love, Steve I love Wilder. that guy. <laughs> yeah, for real. He's a treasure. For the record, for those of you who aren't aware of who that's in reference to, there's a 49ers fan who called what Bang Bang Niner Gang. Yeah. Again, fortunately, there are listeners who aren't on the TMA fan page, and I like to try to make sure that they are aware of what we're discussing at times. Uh, you can text in 314-881-TMA5. <laughs> that is the Jeff Lottman Compass Realty text inbox. And, of course, the Collier and Thompson phone lines. A bourbon snob wants to uh, talk to me about golf. Oh, he's off air, I don't think. <laughs> he did not he did not call I in. I was shocked that there would be somebody. <laughs> he did that. not call in. Maybe he needed twenty five dollars. Yeah, I'll call him for twenty five. You want to call him for twenty five dollars? I'll go out there and call him. All right, that's fine. <laughs> you gotta act like a little lady or bourbon snob. Take your pick and then I'll Venmo you. Bourbon You're not on Venmo, though, are you? Venmo, no. <laughs> Chase a check guy. I'm a cash guy. <laughs> or a check guy. I wonder how much cash I have. I bet I have like $3. Ooh, I actually have $25. It's very rare. I, I, mean, I, usually, I hardly ever... I don't think Costanza wallet. Look at this wallet. <laughs> yeah, that thing is... Yeah, it's, it's like a Costanza wallet. You don't have any money in it. That's right. I, but I mean, do a lot of people carry cash? Like a lot of people like 25 and under. No way. No. no I waited in line for a hot dog uh, at, in, for Mardi Gras at Soulard, And I waited in line for 30 minutes to get a hot dog, get up to the front... Cash only. Me and my buddy. Neither, oh, no. Neither of us had cash. So I, I was so upset. I was like, why? How can you not at least take Venmo 
or have some sort of square thing set up. It makes no sense to me. We're in a cashless society, baby. I make an exception for Pizza Go Go. Yeah, it's the only time I really have yeah, cash. If yeah. I have cash, it's going to Pizza Go Go. Oh hey Tim, great seeing you this weekend. I had an erection all yesterday on the way home. That's Juan from PP Corp, who, uh, as I told Chairman Steve in Wildwood, I saw uh, when going to Francis Park yesterday. Boy, that was packed, and the hawk was up. Boy, howdy, Tim. I am telling you. You know what? I've seen Juan PP Corp at Francis Park as well. That's where he hangs out, I guess. Um, what was that? What's the uh, Seth Goldcamp in Design Air is very involved. Is it Groove? Grub and Groove. Grub, Grub and Groove. groove. Sure. That's where I saw uh, Juan for PP Corp. He's a great American. And I saw him in Vegas. Went to the Chandelier Lounge with him. Man. With your Sleepless in Seattle shirt. That's right. That's right. People knew. Nora Efron stands all around me. <laughs> uh, email in the morning after at InsideSCL.com for our design air. Heating and cooling email today. Comes your way at 945. Jackson and I deal with the situation down the hallway. We will be fine. It's called Balloon Party. And that airs on 101 ESPN from 10 to 11. Uh, we were waiting for the bourbon snobs call. KG, is he called in? I'm actually on the line with somebody right now. Oh, here we go. Right, 25. Woman. I'm getting the Venmo up. Try a woman. Let's see what we got. Well, while uh, KG No Town's tending to that, I'll tell people to transform your story at Illinois Recovery Center. At Illinois Recovery Center, the team believes in the strength of every individual's journey to recovery, whether you're taking the first step or continuing your path. The IRC's dedicated team is here to support you. Why choose Illinois Recovery Center? Well, it's a holistic healing approach, expert care and guidance, safe and welcoming environment, tailored programs for lasting recovery, top-notch facility, and accommodation. It's all there for you at the IRC. The IRC builds the unwavering determination to thrive beyond the shadows of the past. Whether you've made the life-saving choice to seek help on your own or you want to be prepared for the other end of addiction intervention with a loved one, the chance to learn about addiction recovery is available to you at the Illinois Recovery Center in Swansea. If you or someone you know wants more information about the Illinois Recovery Center, please call 888-472-9559 or visit IllinoisRecoveryCenter.com. It's Illinois Recovery Center. Occasion uh, O-Town, bourbon snob. That, they said they're bourbon snob calling in. All right, this is good. I got to I got to send out twenty five dollars. Uh, did you get a Venmo? Because I'm sure the bourbon snob doesn't want to give out. Unless bourbon snob, you want to give out your uh, Venmo on the air. I'm happy. To well, it's not the bourbon snob. You don't. You don't. You're shorting this play. Yeah. Okay. Uh, good morning, bourbon. Diggy is correct. It's TMA Walrus number one. TMA Walrus number one. KG in O-Town, uh, what do you have to say for yourself? Uh, that one's on me. <laughs> Slip one past the goalie. Yeah, you should know all the voices by now, KG. I told him. I told him it was me, but I said to tell you guys it was bourbon snob. Oh, you were complicit. Take yourself off speakerphone if you could, and maybe. Just... I'm not on speakerphone. I'm on my AirPods. Oh, okay. Sorry. No, it's okay. What's going on? I apologize. Yeah, way to go, Shane Lowry. Idiot. Either way. I'm just calling to say hi. I have nothing important to say, but enjoy the show as always, and it's always a pleasure to hear KG on with you boys, and I love the show and everything you guys do. So oh, what a gentleman. What a wonderful, what a wonderful sentiment, Iggy. How about that? Nice. Yeah, yeah buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Walrus. I appreciate the kind words, buddy. Yeah, that was nice. I mean, it did sound like that was an inside job. But it was a lovely call, so it was wonderful. That where's Bourbon Snob? Did yeah. he not call in? He's not calling in. Why wouldn't he? Not because he'd have to defend his trashing of you for not being able just to like golf. <laughs> that would take about two minutes. It'd be twenty five bucks richer. Twenty five dollars. Yeah, maybe he's wealthy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. What about the females? They're not calling in either. That's, yeah, that's alarming. People are leaving putts out there. Yeah, there's a lot of putts out there. They just text your girlfriend. Hey, can you call in for two minutes? Yeah, twenty five dollars. Worse, they'll ask you if you've ever been with a woman, and then you and move on. That's it. That's all I'm looking for. Just want a quick answer. Uh, Bourbon Snob is in the YouTube chat, so has the ability to call in, but is just not. It's a real Wuss. miss. Real miss. <laughs> I don't know. Fifteen a hard hole at uh, <laughs> it's a bear PJ trail. National. Yeah. Yeah. What's up? What's the problem? Mel Lowry got into <laughs> Lowry gotten back up to tied for fourth uh, with a birdie, and then he just knocked one in the water for a double. This is a nice little simulcast we have going on with, with <laughs> this like for a tournament that the people least don't interesting care about on Sundays, much less. <laughs> There's a lot of people probably o'clock. can't follow it because uh, they're at work and they can't. So I'm just giving you a look. They're yeah, probably unaware it's going on. Eckroat made a bogey, and uh, Mim Willie is now only two back. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> <laughs> I see Eckroat three up, Iggy, going into 17. Yeah, he must have just made a birdie because he bogeyed the hole before that, I believe. 
Birdie in 16 is legit, if that's indeed the game. Birdie 15? 16. No, he parred 15. He bogeyed 14. 14 is okay. tough. 14 is a tough hole. I have trouble with 14 and 16. And what's the one, 17, what's he, he 17 Nobody now? cares about this, though. I know they don't care. <laughs> Where's he at? 17? He's on 17. 17 can get you. What's How many under is he, though? He is 17 under, okay. and he's on 17. Let me go back to that tape on Friday when I said I would predict the uh, cut and the winning score. Huh. <laughs> I was off by a stroke on the cut, but I did say 17 under. There you go. It's a huge win. We're all Iggy's haters now. Yep. They're there. Yep. Fan on page. The tech line <laughs> on the and fan page. Is that right They're in Lou Korak's mentions. <laughs> Creepy. Oh, Joaquin Neiman, another win on the uh, Live Tour. KG and O-Town, here, I, I like getting rankings from you because you're still a man of the people even though it sounds like you're starting to... Yeah, <laughs> no, <hurt>. I am. <laughs> yeah, well, you can say it all you want, actions. Yeah. But rank the dislike of the five regular members of the program on the TMA fan page, and I'll oh, see if... Come I, on. It's, well, well I mean, the strongest... Why don't you just say who's second through fifth? Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Uh, number two, <laughs> number would, two would probably be uh, Plowsy. 100%. Okay. Easy. Uh, three. Jackson move up there with them last couple, that, that no, miracle on it's, ice. It's, it's, I mean, it, this is, there's no question about the ranking here. I'm going to go three, Tim. Yeah. It's, it's Iggy, It's unfair, Plowhawk, but yeah. Iggy, Plowhawk, me. Jackson, Doug. Jackson, Doug, I guess. Now, Jackson wasn't a part of the show pre-2021 except for a few weeks. But when we had the uh, agreement amongst us that we were no longer talking politics, it would have changed things. But again, Jackson wasn't on the show. But, uh, yeah, there you go. Yeah. No question about that. The awakening's happening with you, though, Tim. The, we call it the beginning of the correction. Oh, yeah. The beginning of the correction. The Joe Buck correction. Joe Buck was at the uh, Blues game on Saturday. Uh, and, and I'm... And I guess they showed us on the scoreboard? Oh, nice. About time. Th thank you. Right. You're sitting together? No. Well, I, no. I was there with my wife and my two boys. And, I, and, and my wife said something, and I'm like, oh. I was, I go, we were on the scoreboard, and she, goes, and she goes, yeah. And I said, well, what were we doing? She goes, well, you were looking at your phone like normal. <laughs> That's great. Ellery's baby. But because I got a text from Joe saying, hot, you're Jamie Rivers hot. <laughs> like, oh, that's great to hear. And I'm like, what the hell does this mean, though? Because in my mind, it's like, a, it's like 5.30 on a Saturday, and just randomly for Joe to text me that I'm hot, I'm Jamie Rivers hot, I'm going... The hell's that mean? You yeah, know? I, I would have figured it would have been like a one of those stars ice side, uh, ice side. George Clooney's at the game. Yeah, like what they do at MSG, you know, like here are the stars of the game. Stars tonight. are at the game. Yeah, it's like you, and then like I don't know, like a guy who reviews <laughs> hot dogs or something. Did you see Steve Ott's son wiling out? I on did. That? I did. That was fun. And that Blues Instagram post, that's where I saw it anyway. The Instagram post. I saw that. Uh, he has he has a son named Maverick Ott. And I don't know how old he is because uh, my son plays against, my six-year-old son plays against his younger son. Um, but uh, I think the Kirkwood eight and under, the mites for hockey dads out there, and of course all the hockey moms listening, uh, played it after the first or second intermission. And, uh, and they cut to a kid in the stands who took his shirt off and started screaming, and it turns out it was Steve Ott's son. They showed a simultaneous video with Steve Ott looking up at the scoreboard, seeing it, and trying to keep from laughing yeah. at the situation as he's on the bench coaching the Blues, who had, I, f I felt like, 30 power plays on Saturday. Hey, Holy break, crap. Breaking news, we got a lady on line one. Yes! Yes! Twenty-five dollar. I'm twenty-five dollars lighter. And I know I'm zero for one on the last couple on the last call, but this one's real. All right. All right. The Venmo's up. Hello, madam. Nice, Jackson. Uh, good morning, gentlemen. I want my twenty-five bucks. You better believe it, sister. No problem. Do you want to give out your Venmo? Or do you want to give it to, uh, to KG and O Town? It's up to you. I will give it to KG and O Town. Oh, you should say it over the air. All these horny sads would definitely probably send I you know, a five. I know. It kind of would be like a pseudo OnlyFans. Plowhawk's right on. That. Pay your mortgage. Um, possibly. But they're back on uh, uh, Are you a regular caller, or did your husband put you up to this, or what's the deal? No. Okay, so actually, I am um, the sister-in-law of Jakey Jakey Big Mistakey, oh. and my oh. husband is his youngest brother and has worn me down over probably the last year, 
forcing me to listen to you guys. Forcing. But now I finally, maybe three months, am a regular listener. They did Welcome it. to the show. What is it about this show that you enjoy, Jakey, Jakey, Big Mistakey, sister-in-law? Hello? <laughs> It's a perfect promo. That's the greatest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> Can you hear me, Jakey, Jakey, big mistakey sister-in-law? <laughs> God, I bet this is a bad spend on the $25. You know what? what? Uh, the the gates have just opened. We got a lady on line two and three. I really wanted to follow her. Yeah, I, I, I think she's her. off. What about her? What, what happened to Jakey, Jakey, big mistakey sister-in-law? Is oh, she gone? Line two drop. I don't know what happened to line one. Line two drop, but we do have one on line three. Right when the money goes. Yeah, I know. Well, I, I got to make sure I pay her. Make sure if she calls back. Uh, can oh, you yep, get her? it's ringing. Okay. You I, asked her what she liked about the show. We have one on line answer, three. So left. Well, which is, is Jakey, Hello. Jakey, big mistake? Nice. This is this is Steve from Wildwood's wife. I'm sorry. The twenty. Twenty five dollars has already I'm been spent. I'm calling for the twenty five dollars. It's already. Yeah. We already. It's already. Sorry. I only have so oh much cash. Oh my gosh. Okay. Thank, Thank you. <laughs> I love that Steve forced his. You know, because she is so nice. Asking if a restaurant's open or closed. She's so sweet. <laughs> as soon as the hair is closed. What I does that out. say about Steve and Wow when he had his wife calling? I'm just here for the twenty five. It's already gone. Okay, That's bye. A smart move. Yeah, I, I gotta respect that. it. Yeah. I want to know my more about. If I had any acumen, I would have said, "Hey, you got to call in real quick." I so I don't. So this stays within the household. Yeah. But now I'm twenty five dollars lighter. Uh, do we have Jakey Jakey's big, big Jakey's sister in law back? She called back in. I got the Venmo. Okay, good. Is she, but it, I wanted to ask her questions. Uh, she did not stick around for that. She just wanted anti -reindeer to reindeer game. Ah, just anti wanted the twenty five bucks. Game. That's all they wanted. Well, I respect that. You know, that was that was the. What do you right. like about the show? And then she bolted like the wind. Four second pause and then hello. <laughs> she said we turned okay. into robots and she had to bail. I don't know if there was a bad connection or what. I really wanted to hear the answer I, because if you've been listening. So, are we talking about Corrigan here? Mm, that's, okay. what I've okay. that's, that's what I was Jake thinking. That's, why, that's who I have, but we have like a few Jakes who are active in the show audience, so I don't know if there's other guys who call themselves Jakey, Jakey, Big Mistakey. Um, and I wanted to see, uh, like, if you've been listening for so long, but then finally, in the last three months, you started to like it. And she didn't say that, though. I've become a regular listener. Yeah, she did not say she liked yeah, it. I know. There's a difference. So I wanted to see what what transpired. That, that just tells me she wasn't really a listener. She was just trying to be nice. When you asked her, what do you like about the show? She, she, she like couldn't answer it. So I hope she calls back in. Cause she, I'd like seemed, to get more uh, she seemed sporting. You picked up on that? Well, either way, I'm gonna well if Tim would have got to that question, we'd have found out. But right. she wouldn't let him. Oh, she didn't want to do that. Uh, Don Peepee says they can't figure out the number. The number what is 636-9004-TMA. Collier and Thompson phone lines. Yeah. That's 862, in case you're wondering what 4TMA would be. Nicely 862. Done. Nice. She's back if you want to get that question yeah, in. Let's you. go. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, good morning, Jakey Jakey, Big Mistakey's sister in law. Welcome back to the show. <laughs> Thank you. Right, so I was asking what, uh, after listening for so long, reluctantly, uh, you, what, what was it that made you a regular listener? Um, I, I think it's just the dynamic between you guys. I don't like sports, um, but you don't talk about sports all the time. Mm -hmm. I grew up listening to Frank Opinion. Yeah, I, there's like I, can, I, can, I, can, I can follow that. There's probably some similarities there, aren't there? Yeah, I was just like a big talk radio kind of nerd mm -hmm. as a child with my mom. <laughs> like my 21st birthday, I was on his show. That's like what wow. I wanted to do. How about that? That's dope. Um, so yeah, you guys just kind of sucked me in. Um, yeah. they're like, it, it's just a good dynamic. Um, some of you drive me insane. Who, who drives me? I'm, I'm curious on that. Who drives you insane? Yeah, that'd be cryptic. Um, well, that's kind of mean, but, um, well, all right, it's fine. Open for him. Yeah, he it's... drives me crazy, but he, the show would not be the same without him. I, 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 I agree. I, I, you know, it's it's tough to say who the most irreplaceable is because obviously to be weird for me to be honest, but but Iggy, it, there's not another personality that you could find who would replicate Iggy's personality. Absolutely. I mean, he's necessary, but you know. And then I I love that Doug is just kind of like the funny old grandpa that like gets offended <laughs> by everything you guys him. say. God, poor guy. I'd probably be happy with that. <laughs> Yeah, he just wanted it. Oh, it's, so um, it's just, it's great. 
Well, thank you so much, Jakey. Mm -hmm. Jakey, big mistake. He's uh, sister-in-law. That's wonderful to hear. Thank you. I'll take that as a compliment. Yeah, there you go. I really do. That's that's kind of a compliment that I drive you nuts, but you still like listening. Yeah, yeah. Okay. it wouldn't there be the go. same without you. Amen. I couldn't agree more with that. All right, Jakey, Jakey, big mistake. Yeah, I got your uh, your Venmo, and I'll be sending uh, the twenty-five momentarily. All right, thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you for listening. There it is, Jakey, Jakey, oh. big mistakey's sister-in-law. I mean, we were just flooded with female callers. We had two. Yeah, that's jeez. Rank those across the station. I think we're in the leader in the clubhouse. <clears throat> that's yep. two more we've had all year. That's right. Is that right? Collier and Thompson phone line. See this Collier and Thompson sponsorship. Things are happening. All right, we got a break. Uh, we are about to start our very first Schaefer Door nine o'clock hour. Schaefer Door is a new sponsor, just like Collier and Thompson's a new sponsor. Big day, baby. Yep. Schaefer Door. Uh, welcome aboard. The 9 o'clock hour is going to get underway here momentarily. James Carlton is going to be in studio. Then we have the Design Air Heating and Cooling email today. Then Jackson and I go down the hallway and we'll deal with the situation. And that's called Balloon Party. This is TMA presented to you by Brown and Kirby. Chow Chow on the Hill is your one-stop shop for all your pet supplies. As soon as you walk through their doors, you and your pet are considered family and treated with superior service and personalized attention. Jessica is the owner and is a certified pet nutritionist and impassioned about educating her clients on the product that will keep your pets happy and healthy. My favorite part about Chow Chow is in connection with All Paws Safe Haven, an organization that helps shelter animals find forever homes. To learn more about Chow Chow, visit CIAOCHOWSTL.com or Stop by and tell them Plowsy sent you. I get asked all the time by people, if I'm in an accident, what should I do? And while yes, you should call the police, exchange insurance information, and take pictures of the scene, all those things are important. But the most important thing you need to do is hire a personal injury lawyer. This is Doug Biggs from Longo Biggs Injury Law. And if you've been hurt by someone else's negligence, don't take on the insurance company yourself. Insurance companies have teams of people and a playbook designed to keep you running in circles so they can pay you as little money as possible for your accident claim. If you don't have a lawyer, they know you can't bring your claim to court and they will never give you full value. We recently took an offer from an insurance company without a lawyer on the case from $12,000 to $200,000. You can't get that kind of result without an attorney on your case. Even if you don't hire us, you need to hire a personal injury attorney. Check us out online at longobigs.com. When we think of a real estate agent, we think of somebody simply selling our home or finding us a new one. I mean, they're all the same, right? Okay, here's the comps. We'll take some pics, we'll post them, and uh, hey, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll get back to you, okay? A home is life-changing, and your real estate agent should reflect that. Honesty, integrity, and someone who will go above and beyond to make your dreams come true. The Jeff Lyman Group with Compass Realty. We're different because you're different. We want what you want. Experience the difference today at JeffLutman.com. Bringing people and properties together. The choice of a lawyer is important and shouldn't be based on an ad. After a serious car accident, people have two questions. Why me and what now? Well, no one knows why you, but I'm Terry Crouppen and my law firm Brown & Crouppen sure can help with the what now. Car repairs, medical bills, lost wages, pain and suffering. We're Brown and Crouppen, and we've got all those answers. All you have to do is call. 222-2222. TMA listeners have a lot to think through financially. Saving for retirement and college while also paying bills and enjoying life along the way. Call Mark Hanna. Mark works with you to design a strategy to do your finances right. It's a straightforward approach that starts with a 15-minute phone call to discuss your needs. Visit evergreenstl.com or give Mark a call at 314-889-0503 today. Mark Hanna offers securities through Equitable Advisors, LLC, member FINRA, SIPC, a broker-dealer. Equitable Advisors, LLC, an SEC-registered investment advisor. Evergreen Wealth Strategies is not a registered investment advisor and is not owned or operated by Equitable Advisors or Equitable Network. The Illinois Recovery Center is dedicated to providing precise and authentic care to those seeking help and treatment. Recovery, it's not just a goal, it's a transformative journey. At Illinois Recovery Center, you'll find an unwavering commitment to provide the support, guidance, and personalized care you or your loved one needs to rediscover a life filled with purpose, strength, and lasting renewal. If you or someone you know wants more information about the Illinois Recovery Center, please call 888-472-9559 or visit IllinoisRecoveryCenter.com. Hey, this is Tim McKernan, and I am here right now with James Carlton of the Carlton State 
Farm Insurance Agency. I made the switch to start working with you, James. It couldn't have been easier to make that switch to start saving money. Well, I appreciate that, Tim, and we appreciate your business. Uh, yeah, this is the time to save money. My, my goodness, we're all feeling it at the grocery store, at the gas pump, etc. So if you've noticed that your insurance rate has gone up, I want to stress how easy it is to get a proposal from us by going online at carltoninsurance.net. Carlton State Farm Insurance Agency online at carltoninsurance.net. Temperatures are finally warming up here in St. Louis, and while that means more fun in the sun, it could also spell disaster for your lawn. Rain equals spring weeds, and now is the best time to get ahead of it. Green Envy has been here in St. Louis for more than a decade, servicing and treating lawns just like they would their very own. Crabgrass can lay dormant for years until the conditions are right, and the massive amounts of moisture we've had is sure to wake up even the oldest crabgrass seeds. Green Envy only uses products that have been formulated for Missouri soil, weather conditions, and turf types, not national generic products that are insufficient and ineffective. Let the experts at Green Envy help you choose the best treatment program for your lawn this season. Phone lines are open 12 hours a day, Monday through Friday and Saturday 9 to 1 to take your calls and answer questions. Call Green Envy today at 636-757-1600 or visit GreenEnvyLawns.com and make your lawn the envy of the neighborhood. John, I'm so tired of this kitchen. We haven't updated anything since we moved in. The stove looks like it's from the 90s and the rest of it. Are you even listening to me? Did you say something, honey? Yeah, yeah, no, kitchen's fine. We have cabinets. There's food in the cabinets. We're good. Oh, Guys, if this sounds a little familiar, trust me, your wife is probably right. It's time for a remodel. Collier & Thompson is the company to trust. Not just for kitchens and bathrooms, but for any interior remodeling job. Need a new man cave? Collier & Thompson. Office? Collier & Thompson. Bar? You got it. Collier & Thompson. They even do wine rooms and fireplace walls. Collier & Thompson is your go-to source for every design consideration. They carry the best cabinets, appliances, and countertops in the business. And better yet, it's all under one roof. No need to drive around to five to ten different businesses for one job. At Callier & Thompson, they do it all. Their showroom is on Manchester Road in Baldwin, right next to Uncle Bill's Pancake House. Let Callier & Thompson bring your dream remodel to reality and come home to quality. Online at CallierAndThompson.com Live from the Michelob Ultra Studios, KPN-TFM HD2, Collinsville, St. Louis. This is TMA All Day. I mean, what the hell is going on? It's the morning after. KPN-TFM HD2, Collinsville, St. Louis. Welcome back. It's TMA presented to you by Brown and Crouppen. Timothy Michael McKernan, Jackson Burkett in for the vacationing. Douglas Elvin, Vaughn the Plowlicks on the ones and twos. Uh, KG and O-Town is... Uh, in his uh, Fox Sekman C6 R1. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, look, it's James Carlton. If you're watching on YouTube, you see it, but I know many of you are podcasting, so you don't. Hey, James. Well, good morning, everybody. How are we Co doing? Wonderful. CarltonInsurance.net is where you go with James Carlton, 314-961-4800. Ken Strode's now a client. That's right. That Big for right. the first quarter numbers. <laughs> nice to have him on your roster. <laughs> It is, yeah. He's a Hall of well, two two time Hall of Famer. Right. So I can't say that about too many other clients we have. Exactly. Ah. I, I took that as a personal shot. Three one four nine six one forty eight hundred, or go online at carltoninsurance.net and work with James, the great James Carlton. Daughter came home last week and it's like, Dad, Dad, guess what? And I'm like, What? Little Susie likes kitten and bunny too. I'm like, oh boy, oh boy, this is rubbing off because I think I shared, you know, a year ago when I was in here that my daughter's like, oh, what what animals do you like? And I was saying, I like kitten and bunny, just to just to recap the famous quote. <laughs> and so to, she remembers uh, that. Uh, and she, she was did so she excited. ever listen to this show? No, no, this isn't a. <laughs> it is. She has not. Been. <laughs> I like kittens and bunnies. I'm just programmed to say that when she says, what animal do you want to be when we're playing? Yeah. And so I just say that, and, and she remembers it, and some girl in her class likes kitten, probably bunnies, probably not pl uh, singular. Well, it's singular, and that drop, and it's wonderful. I want to know what the context is of that drop. Does anybody question. know? Because you had to say it on the show, and what right. would have come up where you, you guys <laughs> asked her her favorite animal? And I would have already started giggling. Like, it would have been too tough to edit. And My guess is this is a video or a live stream <laughs> yeah, taken from... Because it sounds like she's doing it at the bottom of a well. <laughs> yeah, that's not sad. I like kittens and bunnies. That's yeah. before like I'm audio, like they like really kinked it a little bit with like yeah. new iPhones, <laughs> right? Some of the new cameras, oh, right. yeah. Yeah. surround yeah. sounds. The one that I never could understand until just recently, I finally understand what she's saying. It, it used to sound something like this: Good evening, 
<laughs> what the hell? And it's can you hear me good? Oh, I think is what she's saying. Good. Yes. <laughs> oh, I never yeah. knew what she was saying. I always thought, sure. can you hear my goose? I always thought that's what she was saying. But that was her first time and In maybe her only line. time yeah, doing it. Yeah, it was a short run. Take a listen, <laughs> why don't you? Yeah, we're trying. Can you hear me, Goose? <laughs> there it is. It does kind of sound like uh, Goose. Vivian yes. Azure, uh, she was that. in Toronto. She was an attorney who decided to try the adult industry yeah. for two yeah. weeks. Beautiful woman, but uh, quickly exited the <laughs> industry. Uh, and uh, it was lovely to have her on and do her only ever interview, I believe, James. Yeah, can you hear me good? That's on the resume. Yeah, that's a huge one for us. KG and O-Town, I understand you've got a developing situation on the phone line. These Collier and Thompson phone lines, Jackson, I mean, what are uh, we, I'm telling you. Uh, yeah, Ben the Butcher called in, and he had his wife on standby to tell a tale of a time she hooked up with a woman, but... It was predicated on the Venmo being opening back, opened back up. I will open it back up. I'm not going to pay 25. What was I? Oh, Bourbon Snob's not calling in. He's got to be. A, I guess he's an online kind of person. Uh, so that's so that. <laughs> hey, his situation is our win. So yes, I'll I'll give the twenty five dollars. I was going to give it to Ben uh, Bourbon Snob can go to Ben the Butcher's wife. So there you go, 636-9004, TMA. It is the 9 o'clock hour, which now is sponsored by Schaefer Door. Welcome aboard to Schaefer Door, S-C-H-A-E-F-E-R-D-O-O-R, SchaeferDoor.com, and they have set up a number for our audience to go to them directly by call or text 636 636- 782-3608. This will get you the quickest response time. They service all kinds of garage doors for service and new installs. They service commercial doors as well. It's Schaefer Door online at S-C-H-A-E-F-E-R-D-O-O-R.com or call or text 636-782-3608 when you have that garage door spring break. Sweet mother of mercy, is that a problem? This is where Schaefer Door comes into play, and they handle much more as well. They are the 9 o'clock hour sponsors. Day one today of their sponsorship, welcome aboard to Schaefer Door. Schaefer Door is a Clope Master Authorized dealer. There you go. They're there coming out go. to my house in two weeks. How about that? that? Right? I know Jason. Jason's a great guy, and we visited what a, a few weeks ago to discuss advertising on TMA. And it just so happened... And the garage, it still functions, but it clearly is hanging on by the skin of its teeth. And so he's going to correct that much lower price than I expected in my head. Could not say enough good things about Schaefer Door. That's outstanding. Yeah. That's good to hear. Yeah. My garage door probably needs to be updated. It's so, now that you mention that, it dry, it, it's so damn slow and loud. That's what I think of. And I would think it's the same thing since we moved into the house. So yeah. it's been a while. But I'm, I'm glad to get it done. We actually did a garage cleaning yesterday to get ready for it. So. Is that right? And that's always uh, kind of a, it's tough to get going, but once you get it done, you're thrilled about the uh, functionality of your garage. Are we still waiting for that call? <laughs> <laughs> you, you have to wait no longer. There we go. Oh. Uh, I got another. You got a Venmo for me, KG in O-Town? Uh, I did not get it yet. I can get it after the call's over. All right, fair enough. Um, hello, caller. <laughs> Hi. Yeah, this is Beatrice, the butcher's assistant. Beatrice, the butcher's assistant. I feel like we're role-playing, Jackson. Yeah, Beatrice, know. good morning, and welcome to the program. It's TMA. Are you a uh, loyal listener? Uh, I'm a bystander listener from uh, Ben the Butcher. Ben the Butcher just started listening to the show. I think Ben the Butcher found out about the show from Balloon Party. I believe so. Uh, yeah, I know. I'm a weird. Bad. I it, like. I didn't expect that to come this way. I expected some of our listeners to matriculate there, but not this way. So uh, Ben's been active on QFTA, and uh, how long have you and Ben the Butcher been together, uh, Beatrice? Uh, a little over ten years. Ten years. Uh, yeah. And how long of those uh, years have you been married? We have been married now three years. Got it. So things are still kind of fresh, Jackson. Things mm. are still kind of fresh. <laughs> Uh, there's, still, there's still some secrets out there. Oh well, why don't you why don't you tell why don't you tell Darren a few of your secrets? What am I here? <laughs> I'm engaged. Well, I heard I heard you guys were looking for a, for a very specific story. Um, but can we up the ante to fifty dollars? Wow, <laughs> strong well, look, play. Look All right, I'll throw in Tim for it. Oh, there you go. <laughs> God bless you, <laughs> James Dang. Carl. Yes, you, you got fifty dollars. Now be out of Iggy. All right. All right, $50. All right. Well, so one time in college, 
Uh, friends, we all, you know, they throw those weird, you know, foam parties at bars, and it was some dumb thing, but we were, you know, young and drunk. Hey, and uh, Beatrice, let me ask you this real quickly so I can set the yeah. scene for the audience. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is great. It's great when somebody plays along. Uh, what, 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 what university are you at? Um... Oh, that, She's that's deciding a, if she wants to reveal that information. I mean, there are probably tens of thousands of people there. I don't yeah. think we're going to narrow it down. Does it really Yeah, uh, so I was at SMU in Dallas. Oh, Beatrice got cash. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a lot more interested in the story. To be honest with you, that was going to be Missouri State. No disrespect. Yeah, shout out to everybody Anybody. in Springfield. <laughs> Everyone's Springfield. We love you. Shout out to Cape. <laughs> either, oh. either, either of the two. Well, you know, so, you know, we're just, we're all having a great time at this foam party and it's starting to get to the point where, you know, the foam, it starts building up. It was almost like to the top of our heads. There was so much damn foam at this party and we couldn't see anything. And there's, you know, a hundred plus people there and there's strobe lights. And it was, it was wild. It was one of the, it was kind of like a party that you see in the movies, you know, just a little bit too much, but you know, we're all having fun. And at first I was flirting with this one guy over in the corner and then this girl comes up to me and, and I guess it was like her man, you know, and she was getting kind of angry and, you know, one thing led to another. We we're all so drunk and stupid instead of fighting, you know, she and I, we kind of just like look at each other and things start taking off a little bit. Now, hold on a second right there. <laughs> seems like I'm missing some details because you're in the foam and then things start taking off, but what caused it to take off? This is my favorite part of this stuff. <laughs> you know, it's it's hard to say. There there are missing pieces of that night. Um, I remember her telling me that she, you know, she was there with that guy. I don't even remember his name. I think it was like Andrew. Um, mm. But she was supposed to be there with him, and she kind of was telling me to back off. And I didn't really feel like backing off. Um, and instead of fighting, she and I kind of just looked at each other and then we just started having some fun. Wow. What does, what does having some fun mean? <laughs> oh, are we like getting into it? You got 50 bucks. Yeah, 50 to you. bucks. I mean, I got to get some ROI, sister. <laughs> All right. So she and I, so, you know, we start making out in the corner of this bar. There's strobe lights going. The foam is building. You know, at this point, you know, everyone's just basically in bikinis, if nothing less. Um, and, you know, we're over there probably for about 30 minutes in this corner, and things are starting to heat up quite a bit. And her boyfriend is trying to get us, you know, to all go back to his room together. And I'm not going to lie, you know, we start, you know, kind of walking and making our way over. But... He, the guy ended up being kind of weird, and so we kind of just left him in the dust. And and next thing I remember, she and I we were in the shower. Wow, wow! I mean, it just it was we we're moving along, and then once again, right yeah. there, just another ramp. I thought we were on the sidewalk. Right, the shower just showed up. <laughs> yeah. So hold on. So you're at, so you're at the apartment. There there are missing pieces to this night from my memory, but okay. but some of them were very clear. I guess. So you're so just the two of you are in the shower. Just the two of us were in the shower. He was waiting in the bed for us, and we kept saying, yeah, we'll be right there, be right there, just trying to get some of the foam off. Um, but then she and I, you know, we we finished happily in the shower, and uh, we both just kind of left quickly after that. So you left him sitting in the bed with a soft cow. Yes. Huh. Yes, we did. Yeah, bad beat for him. Sure, he has a different yeah. recollection of this story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, was it Ben by chance? <laughs> Uh, this was before I met Ben, so unfortunately not Ben. Is Ben comfortable with this story? Does he feel like a cuckold? No, you know what? He's probably going to come home here from work in a little bit now. Yeah, probably all turned on. He's got to yeah, be thrilled. Exactly. That's, that's, that's good for you. Exactly. That's a win for you. <laughs> uh, so, I, you know, we're, we're, we're still regulated by the Federal Communications Commission, so you're going to have to navigate carefully. But what took place in the shower? Uh, there was a lot of hand movement. Hand movement, Jackson. Mm. <laughs> How was the skin? There, yeah, was her skin were, soft? Oh, the skin, yeah, her skin was very soft. Flip that off. <laughs> yeah, especially, you know, I mean, you, you have the foam, you know, first we're a little sticky, you know, we're trying to wash each other up and get cleaned, and 
it ended up being very, very dirty. And did you guys uh, re-engage at a later date? I tried, but she didn't want to. Wow. So what do you maybe, think that's maybe about? Maybe it wasn't as good. I don't know. I think she was a little bit more embarrassed. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I was I was happy to go back, but she she didn't want to. Okay. Our, our listeners oftentimes, when, when something like this pops up, uh, they're skeptical. Uh, Doug's work husband wrote in, this is made up. You dolts get worked <laughs> up too easily. Uh, what would you say to that, uh, Beatrice? Uh, I'd say, you know what, believe what you want, but we all know how college can be a wild time, and my memories are golden. Wow. He wouldn't know. He went to Merrimack. So. <laughs> Merrimack <Coco. laughs> he lived at home. Uh, did you, did, did, did you uh, engage any other times with, uh, with other ladies, or was that a one-off? That, that was a one-off. You wow. know, there have definitely been other times I've thought about it, but that, that was the one and only. But it sounds like you would still be open to it. Uh, you know, life has changed a little bit. There's kids involved now, happily married for three years. Uh, but that's not to say you never know what can come down the pipe. It's great to hear. It's great to hear. That's wonderful to hear. All right, that was worth my $25, James. I don't know about you. That's what I needed. I needed that on a Monday. I it's think like I, It's like I snorted a rail. The best now I'm ready for balloon party. The best conflict resolution I can imagine. Yeah. I mean, uh, she was kind of moving in on the boyfriend, and the girlfriend took exception, and they stare each other down, and rather than like going after it, they just get into it. Yeah. Can you imagine if like they did that in Palestine and Israel? Yeah. Nicely done. I mean, yeah. my gosh, we could yeah, solve the world's problems so there. It was perfect. It weaved it back in. I feel like in. there's just a lot of sexual tension out there. I feel like a lot could be could be handled with that. I agree with you. I think it's a wonderful <laughs> sentiment, and uh, and I'm so grateful that you shared the story. And it's at SMU too. I mean, wow. I mean, and I would imagine. Let me ask you this: the the, po the, the, the the Pope. Uh, you probably know this, Beatrice, but the Pope beat me in the uh, Jay Randolph Jr. Fan Page Club Championship. I think it was the quarterfinals, Jackson. Yeah, he could roll the rock. He could roll the rock, and he says, "Would she consider herself attractive? Can we get measurements?" You know, these questions. I, of course, disapprove, but I have an obligation to the audience to read them. Um. Yeah. No, I, I consider myself attractive. Yes. Do you want to post a picture of yourself on the TMA fan page on Facebook? Ooh. No. No, I don't think I your can. Name. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, i got to put pucks on net. It's the only way we're going to score goals out here. Uh, and then the measurements, uh, are you willing to share those with the Pope? I am 5'2", 125, uh, rocking a 34C. Uh, oh, James. Wow. <laughs> Ew. Natural? Yes. I like to hear that. I like yep. to hear that a lot. I'm only, I'm only 30. I'm not ready for, for anything other than natural yet. No. Oh, you're, you're thinking about it, though? Um, maybe after kids. Oh, so you're still in the process of breeding. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, Beatrice, you've been a wonderful sport. You will have $50 coming your way, 25 from me and 25 from James Carlton. Thank you so much for calling in. <laughs> All right, thank you guys. Happy Monday. Yeah, happy Monday. Yeah, this is the perfect way. We need Jackson. We need this to. We may, maybe we'll just do it on balloon party. It'll be Monday lesbian erotic. <laughs> Please, I got nothing better. And then we'll have Jeremy Rutherford on. Yeah, I think it'll be a perfect show. Yeah, absolutely. Looking back at this 2014 SMU Mustang team, <laughs> lesbianism was the best thing going on that campus. Right? Since I won the 11 for the 2014 right? Mustangs. Uh, the so. death penalty got him in the early uh, 80s. Yeah. Kudos to you. You can navigate those <laughs> as well as anybody in the industry. When it, when it comes to breaking Who else down, is doing it? <laughs> who's, who's my competition? <laughs> so you're a pioneer, yeah, exactly. and there's kudos to that too. Uh, but it was a pleasure to sit in for that. Yeah, a lot of the, a lot of the listeners seem like they were engaged. Uh, that's good to see. Zero phone parties in my life. I missed out. God, I'm telling you, the SMU thing. Yeah, what's that what area it? called again in Dallas? Fort Worth. Right? Yeah, there's a Highland, Highland Park. Oh, I thought yeah. you were talking about like because T the... T C or no T C U's Fort Worth S M U yeah. Dallas. Yeah. Yeah, 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 that's right. Yeah, I remember when the Blues played the Stars in the playoffs a long time ago. Uh, I was there, and I'm like, oh my god, what? I mean, I knew Dallas had beautiful women. Yeah, it's amazing what money does. But we were in the area around S M U, and holy crap, it's a nice Island area. Park's big money. Uh, oh yeah. my god, S M U T C U. What's another? I mean, it, to me, I don't know this stuff. You know, growing up, but. Uh, these moneyed schools. Yeah. Uh, Austin now with the University of Texas. Is that right? Big money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
big time. UT is plenty of money out there too. Well, there you go. Nice little uh, story from Beatrice. I got her. Did, did you get her uh, Venmo? I sent it to you. Oh, you said for, it for tax purposes. Oh, I yeah. see. It's, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. It's very active. Beatrice, stay on the line. I'll grab your Venmo. She's still on the line. <laughs> Says she's on air. Wow, what a champion! Well, she gets the she gets the game. Are you not? Can you not put her back on hold? Hit the number twice, KG. Has anybody seen my nurse? Nancy? <laughs> Bill? Anybody seen my... <laughs> Looks like they're just calling back. <laughs> yeah, they gave fine. up. Uh, James, got any idea on um, who Missouri's athletic director is going to be? Zero idea. Okay. Yeah, no idea on that. <laughs> I guess it's been... I got one for Jackson. Is he weeks? the most cultured member on the dais? I feel like if I had to pick one... <sighs> I think so. Iggy's been to Europe, though. He's been to Europe. <laughs> if that's the, if that's the <laughs> barometer. <laughs> All right, so if you had to pick a place in St. Louis, the highest likelihood that you'd hear mm, the most languages, which place would it be? Like a place that people visit. Like a tourist mm -hmm. estimate? Yeah, in St. Louis. I just oh. I, okay. I went right. to the zoo on Saturday, took the kids. Might be the answer. And it was amazing. I mean, you heard all sorts of dialects and Is languages right? and people. I mean, it was packed out of the wazoo. And let me ask you this real quick because I know we got to get to email today. If your wife tells you she's going to the Fox for a show and the show sucks, and she and her friends excuse themselves halfway through the first set and go to Rockwell. No exception to that, right? That's fine. That's their own time. I was right. taking the kids to the zoo. Have I agree at with that. But if I said that I was going to the Blues game, and it was 4 nothing in the first period, and we, and we bailed and went to the east side, and even though it's in the same amount of time, I think that uh, the pretenses would be different. I, it, do you guys have the same... I agree 100%. I don't even see if there's... Is there some kind of debate? Maybe, maybe that east side. That's a little aggressive. Let's yeah. just say any bar. No, no, I was thrilled. Hey, it's a beautiful day on a Saturday. If the, if the play was lousy, I mean, why stay there right. and, and indoors when you can hang out with your girlfriends outside? No. Right, 100%. No, I was, I was very uh, supportive of it when I found out that they had been barring a little Okay. Bit. And I just think if the roles had been reversed, I wonder how the reaction would have been. God, I, my answer to that is it depends on the significant other. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. I really feel strongly about that. And I, th I think she would have been fine with it uh, because, I mean, hell, you can have beers at the Blues game. It's not the drinking part of it. It's, uh, you know, probably extending the afternoon a little bit longer. But we had a great time. I mean, the zoo is world-class in St. Louis. I mean, the parking situation was a little nuts on Saturday. When yeah, I can't beautiful. imagine. With like, but, yeah. I mean, that, that was a great time. I and mean, we had a great time. And it was just me and the little kiddos and got after it i think if i were to tell my wife that we went to the stag bar at like two in the afternoon she'd just be like what in the hell are you doing <laughs> yeah i don't think she'd be angry i know she wouldn't be angry but I, I instead don't... of golf like hey me and the guys are gonna play golf and eh, it started drizzling a little bit we i think east. she might be actually <laughs> might be amused by it like <laughs> wow it's kind of great to hear because we haven't done that in so damn long i used to be a regular there can't imagine the amount of money i pissed away at the stag bar L at two o'clock in the afternoon not at the afternoon yeah, that no, not in the <laughs> afternoon. I don't know. I'm sure I've been, I've been there when the sun's up, but it's because we're Afterwards, still there. Yeah. From, but but as far as like going there, like let's see what's doing. No, I'd be intrigued to see what the, the people would say. Oh, it's like the matinee roster, but sometimes that might be somebody who's got a family and they kind of that's that's <laughs> the, that's the scene, and they're still you know doing well for themselves. Like Beatrice, hmm. who we owe fifty dollars to, in the phone parties at SMU, Jackson. How about that? Any phone parties in Columbia when you were there? No, never a foam party. What stuff. about Golf Co Golf Coast? Where was your first school? Yeah, what about that? That's <laughs> no, right, FC. No. Uh, FGCU, no. The party scene was lackluster. Is that right? Because it's commuter? Yeah, big commuter. I mean, I'm as old as the school is, so it's... Oh, wow. Uh, okay. Yeah, it's not like there. if you lived on campus, you lived in university housing. There wasn't fraternity or any Greek life yep. housing. Different atmosphere than what you had in Columbia. Then. Way, yeah. way different. Yeah, the parties in Columbia were much better, but no foam party. I feel like that's, you got to have like a pool, kind of, to have a foam party. I don't know. What do you think about the fact this guy's a man in love? I think it's fantastic. So do I. I'm I so happy fans. for him. Thank yes. You. And like, I don't even like ask about it. Like, it's just like understood they're together. And here's the deal. They're going to be together. When we were playing golf on Saturday, Jackson's significant other came up. There's like a little buzz. It's like, ooh, tell, <laughs> tell me what do I know about Jackson's girlfriend. I go, I don't even know her name. Was that the first time you met her? No. We were, oh, okay. we were playing golf. We were gambling uh, on Saturday and Jackson was my teammate. Neither one of us played very well. But you kind of broke even, it sounds like. We were, we were profitable, but I mean, nominal amount of money. But uh, yeah, Jackson, uh, I finally heard her name. Yep, it's true. Yeah. Well, let's keep that off air. That, 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 <laughs> yeah. that, that, was, that was also understood. <laughs> I get it. But this is a man in love, and I'm super happy for him. Yeah, happy as hell. That's awesome. Thank Fantastic. You, I'm telling I you, it. married within three years, children within four. There's my plays, if I can parlay it.
Well, they're out there. How about that? Yeah, that wasn't a, that wasn't a refusal. Yeah, that's true. James, always wonderful to talk it's it over been a with pleasure. you, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks, that's the guys. great James Carlton, carltoninsurance.net. My James Carlton Lemming, I've decided. Yeah, me too. Plus, I mean, I mean, I was sitting there going, God, now I'm going to be $75 into this show today with playing <laughs> Jakey Jakey's sister-in-law, and now all of a sudden Beatrice comes on, and then James is bang, $25 yeah, for him, so $25 for me, $50, and I'll tell you what, that was... Uh, Worth it. Tim, you need a new golf partner. I keep lube in my bag. That's from Mr. Siders. Mr. Siders wants you out and he wants in. Well, you're going to get a chance to settle that. Uh, yeah. Well, listen. A gateway. Yeah. A lot of talk coming out of the Siders camp. And there I'm is just, a lot of talk. I'm just excited to see uh, what happens when the balls go in the air, when the man's put to the test. Let's see uh, if he keeps that same energy. Pope would have Stephen Ames my ass uh, had we played on Saturday. <laughs> yeah, I can tell was. you that. But it was my first round of the year. I hadn't played a round of golf since October. How about yeah. that? Yeah. These are still moments, very much moments of greatness. Yeah, I guess. That's a hit and giggle? Uh, no. I wouldn't necessarily qualify as that. I agree with that also, wow. but no, uh, it was a tournament, uh, like, for my, uh, my, well, I guess like my old neighborhood now, St. Gabriel's. It wasn't the St. Gabriel's tournament, but it was a tournament for a friend of my dad's from my neighborhood growing up um, at, uh, what the hell's the name of the course that people really like? Lynx course out west. Aberdeen, right? Aberdeen. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's right by Crescent and Peebley. Yeah. Um, all right, let's see. I got things to do. What do we got to do? Jackson's going to tell us about his hair. It's yeah, take me to a look. look to do things. Take a look on the YouTube. Everybody's cameras. talking about it. Yeah, it's how much move. better? Like honestly, yeah. Lie detector situation. Sure. How much do you worry about your hair now? Very, very little. I mean, there's obviously and uh, and this time, like a year ago, you were worrying about it. And I'm like, it's fine, but now. God, I'm so. I'm, that's a great thing. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. And someone like me was like, like imagine if I came in here six two. Can you imagine? <laughs> it would you be, imagine? A, be a moment. It would be a moment. I would wonder, then the, just scars up and down <laughs> your legs. Uh, no, but like people like me who have lighter colored hair, and if you have some semblance of hair loss issues, it's going to be even more apparent than someone with darker colored hair because that's just how it is. It's closer to the scalp color. However, you can take a look in the mirror and say, I want to do something about it. Do I'm tired it. of just yeah. you know, putting on a cap every single time I can or just kind of hiding it with certain hairstyles. You don't have to do that. You go to St. Louis Hair Restoration. You say, hey, take a look at my head. They'll give you a free hair consultation. They'll tell you the best treatment plan going forward for you, and they'll give you $250 off the hair treatment by just mentioning TMA. For me, pretty uh, easy stuff. I just take a milligram of finasteride, which is the generic form of Propecia, every single morning, and then wear a little laser cap at night. Six minutes a night, so all in. About six minutes and 15 seconds of Has work a day. Has your love interest seen you with that cap on yet? <laughs> yes, she has. She, find, go. she finds it very amusing. <laughs> that is that, now I'm marriage within two years. <laughs> she finds it very yeah, amusing. If you find the caps. She finds it. She <laughs> thinks it's hilarious. <laughs> but she likes the hair, and I'm telling you, it's you're wearing of, that thing. It's because it's and she's putting up with it, and she's still coming back after you're wearing that thing. Well, she sees the results it's doing. That's thanks to our friends over at St. Louis Hair Restoration for Doug. A little more intensive, but the results are crazy when you look at Doug's head yeah. compared to last year with the FUE procedure that he did. Either way, whether it's me, which is a on the lower end of uh, invasiveness where it's just very simple. And then Doug's, anything in between that can help you out with with St. Louis Hair Restoration, have you feeling more confident and better about your hair situation. It's all thanks to our friends at St. Louis Hair Restoration. If you're injured in a car accident, you need an attorney. You want the best one you can find. If any of my family or friends are ever injured in an accident, I want them to call Doug Biggs and CeeDee Longo. At Longo Biggs Injury Law. For nearly 10 years, Doug Biggs and CeeDee Longo have been recognized as the top 40 under 40 personal injury lawyers by Super Lawyers, the National Academy of Personal Injury Attorneys, and the National Trial Lawyers Association. They're not the churn and burn type of law firm with Doug and CD. You won't be just another file lost in the shuffle. If you have questions about your case, you'll talk to Doug or CD personally, and they will handle every aspect of your case the entire way. They'll get to know you, and you will get to know them. They're online at longobigs.com. That is spelled L-O-N-G-O-B-I-G-G-S.com. Longobigs.com. Remember, the choice of an attorney is an important decision and should not be based solely on advertisements. All right, before we wrap up our Schaefer Door 9 o'clock hour, new sponsor, Schaefer Door, S-C-H-A-E-F-E-R, Door Company, 9 o'clock hour, big day on the Collier and Thompson phone lines. I mean, yeah. my goodness. Hell of a debut for the I am uh, telling phone you. line sponsorship. Wow, that is uh, monstrous. Uh, we have the Design Air Heating and Cooling email the day. 
Filtered file's been filtered? Indeed. All right. Great to have Iggy back from his vacation he went on Friday. Jakey, Jakey's sister-in-law is right. Even though he's maddening at time, the show's not the same without him. And frankly, it's just remarkable that somewhere amidst preparing catfish, he scooped out of the pond on 18 at Gateway for three people on Instagram, having a last chance flash sale on Facebook for a CD collection that consists of two copies of Jimmy Buffett's Beaches and something called Cock Robin. And also, definitely not trolling people on Twitter. See John Denton, Dave Portnoy, Live Golf Fan Account, Mark Lye, and Megan Kelly. He finds the time to do an hour and a half of radio each day, assuming Jody the Coffee Madam has the <laughs> coffee machine in the break room operational. <laughs> Who else is going to berate Shane Lowry during the very first live read on the books for a new sponsor? <laughs> Who else is going to white knight for former teachers turned only fan stars? But when they don't get the answer, they want immediately hightails it to Coles for the busy, buy, for the buy one, get three free turtleneck sale. Take it. Keep Ken and Ken. That's from Champagne Pop Pop Blueberry Pop Pop. Today's word to describe Tim's show is impeccable, but this email is about the first time I ever saw, saw a guy sit on another guy's face. Ha! Huh. We was all over my buddy Tommy's house when his dad came home from his fishing trip. Smelling like fish sweat and ham's beer. He hadn't shaved for days and his stubble turned all of us on. When he passed out in the hammock, my buddy Butchie pulled a Babe Ruth and called his shot. Everybody be super quiet. I'm going to sneak up and give Tommy, Tommy's dad the yank and stank. With that, he... Army crawled beneath the hammock and pulled down Tommy's dad's pant. Yes. He slid right, sand right through the hammock webbing to grab his man pole. <laughs> then went in face into his butt cheeks oh. as Tommy's dad's love released gravity took over and it slid down his sweaty midriff and Budgie's face was absolutely covered with a dirty waterfall of trouser gravy and bum slaw. Yeah. I feel the filtered file I'm in, no, right? But I, I still feel I feel I, this might be wrong, but uh, I think in the IRC suspension. Oh, you're going to suspend deal, him? I didn't know well, you had that kind of power. I don't really. Wow. But I, it's like a suspension suggestion for the Illinois Recovery <laughs> Center here. I'm just going to write it down for Doug. He can review it later if he likes. Uh, first name's Carrie, and then the last name's Masak. Yeah, because Miller's never been suspended for two <laughs> That's got K F and S copies sitting in this binder. Of his. <laughs> the hell? What is bum slow? That off. <laughs> Broadcast excellence again today when Tim's leading question got Beatrice to say, quote, her skin was very soft live on the air. That was for all of us to hear. A real girl. That is what makes Tim the best. Thanks for the replacement soft cow while Doug is in the Hamptons. Also, winter is over. That's from Shooter McGavin, the vice president of the war against voice text because it is lazy and also not everyone knows how to work it, but the phone probably doesn't have it anyway. Long name. <laughs> My friends and I went to the Wisconsin Illinois basketball game this weekend. Eight beefy guys from Southern Illinois with sleep apnea and undiagnosed <laughs> diabetes <laughs> invaded Madison to watch the Fighting Line. I beat the Badgers. The game was great, but shacking up with seven other dudes for a whole weekend is quite an experience. You simply could not escape the filthy fog. Lethal poison gas ruminated from the lone restroom, which inexplicably did not have a vent van, so we were all trapped in the lingering fumes created by the constant kerplucking of girthy logs. We only had eight guys, and my eyes never stopped watering from the ever-present stench of dude. <laughs> Jackson was part of a 20-man crew in Arizona. I shudder to imagine how bad their sweaty grundles and swamp ass stunk in the desert heat. A few fellas had to double up and sleep together because we had eight men's. But there were only four beds and two pull-out couches. The couches may have pulled out, but my buddy Roger certainly did not. I'm sad to report that Wisconsin's Cole Center did not have helmet nachos, but they did have something called brachos, which were tortilla chips smothered with melted cheese, jalapenos, and bratwurst. Mm. Needless to say, I missed most of the second half because I was rocket launching partially digested cheddar out of my backside. <laughs> Overall, dropping mud at a college basketball game was fun, but my... Bear peen accidentally glazed the porcelain 
as I sat down and now my front hole is on fire. Can you get an STI from a public toilet? Thanks. I'll hang up and listen. That's in the JV golf coach. Paraffine. <laughs> and finally, ours is a type of presentation where the sister-in-laws of our listeners feel free to drop in any time to claim $25 and then bolt like the wind before Tim can ask if she's ever been with a woman. What's not to like about being uninformed? <laughs> <laughs> or what's to not like about being uninformed? Why do they have so many different soccer tournaments? Well, the U.S. Open Cup is the country's oldest ongoing national soccer competition where amateur, semi-pro, and lower-tier minor league clubs can advance to play the top-tier clubs. Yeah, we got that. <laughs> the CONCACAF Champions Cup dates back to 1962. We know that. And features clubs from North America, Central America, and the Caribbean. And the winner of that competition earns a spot in next year's FIFA Club World Cup where they'd have a chance to play European giants like Real Madrid or Manchester City. The League's Cup is a relatively new in-season tournament featuring clubs from the top-tier leagues in U.S. and Mexico. The MLS Cup is an American... Oh, my God. <laughs> Of an email. Is this it? is why we it's don't like, like soccer. This it's, email, it's you like just like if send I Googled it. something, that's, that's the answer. The MLS Cup is an American style postseason tournament with seating based on the regular season table. Why do they have it? Money? The chance to win trophies? Well, that's stupid. <laughs> It's a waste of time. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to spend my afternoon trying to win trophies on a golf video game on my phone and then masturbate to some duck porn. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to see a game show called Yuppie Preppy or Hoosier along the lines of Geek Dweeb or Spaz SNL sketch from the April 16th, 1994 episode hosted by Emilio Estevez where contestants ask the guests a series of questions until someone can correctly guess if they are a yuppie, preppy, or hoosier. Well, now that I think about it, yuppie means young, upwardly mobile professional and hasn't really been commonly used in decades. So I'd like to substitute obstra, old, poor, stuck in tiny rent-controlled apartment. And that's from Buck Swope. And that's what we have for the Design Air Heating and Cooling Email of the Day! Ah! I'm going to go with... Uh... Yeah, I love Buck Swope's email. I like blueberry pop pops, but I really like JV Golf Coach and asking a question about his bear peen. Mm. <laughs> Who was the one that uh, talked about my CD collection? Uh, that was uh, Champagne Pop Pop, Blueberry Pop Pop. So blueberry. Yeah, it was. Uh, there's three Jimmy Buffett CDs because they're all three different CDs. Um, and Happy Birthday to Joan Wandersee. <laughs> It's a shame oh, we only got to that at 10 o'clock. I'm going to go with Blueberry Pop-Pop. <laughs> oh, I think I'm going Blueberry Pop-Pop as well. Pop -pop. I felt like there were a lot of worthy ones. Congratulations. Sure. Blueberry Pop-Pop, you have shipped the Design Air Heating and Cooling email today. Now you can ship it on over to the 101 ESPN YouTube channel or 101 ESPN live stream and hear Jackson and I deal with it. They won't be happy, but we'll be fine. We've, uh, we've been dealing with it, and we can handle it. Uh, that's Balloon Party, 101 ESPN. Time for us to shut it down for the plug for KG and Ota. KG and Ota, I know you can't be in tomorrow. Thank you for filling in while Doug's out. Yep, Real. see you next time. God bless. Uh, for Kenneth Iggy Strode, for the Kevin, for Jackson Burkett, in for the vacationing Douglas Alvin Vaughn. I'm Tim Kernan. This has been The Morning After, presented to you by Brown and Crouppen. Urban Dictionary defines thirsty as...